Hey, what's up, guys? We're back again to use your decks in Clash Trial and rate each one that we play. So we're going to be pulling directly from the comment section and also from the live chat. The first deck that we're going to be playing today is the best deck or one of the best decks in the game. It's Evolve Bomber, Splash Shard, Graveyard. It is one of the most skillless decks in Clash Trial. As long as you don't activate King Tower from the opponent, you generally win it. And after this, I'm going to be playing your guys' decks. We're just waiting for people to pop into the chat so then it will populate the stream and then we can actually get suggestions. So in the meantime, we'll just play this one game. Ice Spirit dies to the Cannoneer, so I kind of wasted Elixir there. It's fine, though. We did cycle the Bomber, and, you know, we're going to cycle that anyway to rush the evolution. So the main thing that you've got to do with this deck is just make sure that you are defending minimalistically, dropping King Tower activations whenever you can, and also guaranteeing a position where, you know, if you are cycling your Bomber, making sure that it's not by itself. If you cycle the Bomber by itself, it's an easy King Tower activation for the opponent and a guaranteed loss for you. The Little Prince in the back, and we can cycle a Knight on top of the Bomber if we want to. Uh, the cool thing about cycling the Little Prince is it allows us to have a three-card cycle. So that means we're able to cycle back to the Knight a lot faster than other stuff. And I can go for a Graveyard in the left if I want it. But I don't want to. I hope he clicks the ability because then we can Evo Bomber on it and then get value. But I think this is overall a decent position. I, I mean, I could go Bomber on this anyway, but... We're Tombstone, and we're going to drop it a little bit lower by accident. Oops. <laughs> Sometimes that does happen. One more tile up, and that would have pulled. I could go for a Bomber here, but... Ooh, he's going for a Bomber on one Skeleton. Yeah, see how broken that is? A little, little bit unbalanced. It's okay, guys. It's, it's Clash Royale sometimes. It do be that way. So he might try to activate King Tower here. We'll have to wait and see. He's going to get a lot of damage on us. Fortunately for us, we do have the Cannoneer, so we are going to get bailed out without that last hit. Well played by our opponent, I guess. Uh, the Evil Bomber really scared me in the right, and I kind of overcommitted, and I didn't have enough Elixir to defend that. So, um, as you can see, it is a bit more uh, advantageous for you to play defensive in single Elixir, where this deck uh, is a bit weaker. In double Elixir, the deck is really strong, so kind of where we want to go. We're going to Baby Dragon in the back, and then we're going to go for a Graveyard if he lets this Baby Dragon cross, which he most likely will. Uh, he doesn't, actually. goes in for a very well-played Tesla. He drops a Bomber and a Knight. So the Evo Knight is going to be a problem for us. We want to be able to counter that as much as we possibly can with our own uh, knight. We know we don't want to cycle units as often, because if we cycle units, what happens is our opponent will use the Evo Bomber and finesse us. We're Tornado, and we're take the one Ice Spirit. It's fine. Uh, I don't think that I have to worry about anything here on the right-hand side. We are just going to go for a Poison on top of that little Prince, and we've got an Evolved Knight counter pushing. The beautiful thing about this is all of his damage is on one side. He doesn't have a way of protecting that. We're going to go in for Tombstone to pull the Hog Rider, and if he tries to use a Earthquake, he's not able to kill that. So the reason why we go in for our Tombstone uh, up high to the other side is the opponent isn't able to finesse that with a uh, Earthquake and hit the tower. So they'll miss the Earthquake and they won't have anything. Also, I wonder if the Evo Bomber hits. Of course it does. Why wouldn't it? It's so broken. It's actually just fundamentally like a very bad card for the game. Imagine a card that can easily just kill everything and also attack the tower for two Elixir. It's like a Magic Archer, but better. That costs less Elixir, which is... Fundamentally not good. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. So if he goes in for a Hog Rider, we're not going to miss the Tombstone. This will full counter the Hog Rider, even if he has an Ice Spirit, I believe. And then we can go in for a Graveyard again. So see uh, how low we were at the start and how bad it was. Graveyard just exponentially gets better the longer that the game goes. So as you can see, we kind of have a huge advantage at this point. And Little Prince is going to force that extra Elixir. He was petrified of us doing anything. So he decided to go and cycle more Elixir than he should. And then we can cycle a Knight in the back and then get ready for a Tombstone here. Never dropping anything that gives him an evil bomber uh, because it's just bad for us. To, this is the way that we lose. We're going to cycle a naked graveyard. We don't really need anything with it. We're always going to retain seven elixir. So we have three elixir for the tombstone or the tornado. And I'm sure you guys can see like what we're doing here. Oh, he's going to have um, lightning. So a little bit different than uh, what I anticipated, actually. Well played by our opponent. I could have nadoed, but I decided not to. I'm going to use my baby dragon and I'm going to go for a graveyard. He has to cycle two lightnings to win this. Uh, I hope that that doesn't happen. Obviously, it can happen, so a little bit scared, but it is what it is. I go for our poison now, and we do have Evil Bomber, so I hope he cycles something in front. He cycles anything. If that little prince survives, he loses. Oh my gosh, wait. What if we do one of these? Can we, can we? He just loses. It's it. That's it. It's it. GG. Yeah, broken card. It hit from across the river. So, if I were to rate this deck, it's probably the best deck in the game, uh, alongside, like, Minor Poison with Wall Breakers Evo. Those are the two decks that are like S plus tier, like stupidly strong. If you don't end up having the Evil Bomber, you can use Ice Wizard instead. And you can use Barbro instead of Little Prince then. You only need really the Evo Knight. Evo Knight is by far the best Evo in this deck. 
and also you can use Cannoneer or you can use Princess Tower. But I was literally at 1,300 HP and we still won. So show you guys how strong this deck can be and how kind of unfair Graveyard is as a uh, card concept right now. So yeah, let's uh, jump into the action and take your guys' decks and show you show you what's happening. Bro locked in, I know. I did not want to lose the first game of this stream. I was like, all right, we're locked in, we're loaded up, we're going to collect the W. So this is like a S tier deck, but it's not going to be in the ratings for today. Your guys' decks are the only ones that are going to be a part of the ratings. So, all right, uh, let's take a look. Um, react to my deck. Bro deck name, catch me if you can. <laughs> okay, I'm literally a child, but I, I'm going to show you guys like, why I'm picking his deck. I don't know. This is funny to me. I feel like a dummy. Um, I, I I need to show you guys what we are looking at right now. What we are witnessing. It is greatness. It is the pinnacle of insanity. So, react to my deck. He said, <laughs> like, the fact that he does emojis or emotes like that is insane. So, we're going to, uh, we're going to copy his deck right quick. He wants uh, me to use Monk Evo Firecracker. He's literally like he's coding, honestly. Isn't it funny? He's like underscore in between. Oh, man. Pretty funny. All right, so we're going to use Monk. And we're going to use Evo Firecracker. Where are we at? Where are we at, Evo Firecracker? Very nice. We got Wall Breakers Evo. Nice, nice. And then we got Barbarrel Bats, Arrows, Infernatire Fisherman. Man, you're wilding. So put the Barbaro in. Bats, where you at? Uh, we want Fisherman, Arrows. All right, so you got like double small spell with the Arrows and the Barbaro, which is something that I'm not a huge fan of. I, I, I mean, it works if you're running like a super fast cycle deck with, I don't know, like Mega Knight, but it's uh, a little bit kooky and crazy if you're running some other stuff. All right, we're going to put in a Fisherman as well. And then we got the deck. So apparently, this is what we are running today. Inferno Tower, Fisherman, Monk, Evo Firecracker. Wait, why, why is there still Baby Dragon? Did you have eight cards? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I'm stupid. Inferno Tower, so from the start, Evo Firecracker, Monk. We got those in there. Uh, we got Wall Breakers in there. We got... Bats not in there. Yo, where'd the bats go? Uh, did they did they run away from me? All right, cool. Well, anyway, we're starting off at like 2,500 in the world. We'll see where we end up by the end of the stream by testing out your guys' decks. Let's get after it. Should be a fun time. So let's go, let's go. Apparently, this guy is not going to be easy. He's going to be a total challenge, I believe. So we're going to go for our arrows here. Um, honestly... I kind of like your deck with Cannoneer because you have so many ways of removing bait cards. I vibe with that. Smurf said that the deck that you just used was sweaty. Oh yeah, no, it's 100% sweaty. The, the graveyard deck, that was like the most sweaty deck ever. Um, it's total tryhard mode. It's like, if you want to win every game that you play and you have no regard for playing what's fair and what's not. If you just want to play like the most unfair deck in the game, that's it. Okay, so looking at your deck right now, I don't have a way to damage down Elixir Collector, so that is a very obvious issue. Uh, I mean, if we have evil Wall Breakers, maybe we can find damage, but it's not even guaranteed, my guy. Okay, I guess we're going to Firecracker here and we'll Barb Barrel. Wait, is the Barb going to tank? Yeah, it does. Nice. And then we can go Wall Breakers again. We can run it. The reason why we're playing so aggressive is because our deck is a bit wild and we need to find damage. I can Inferno Tower this. It's going to cost a bunch of Elixir, but I don't want to try to activate King Tower and then lose. All right, we can go Bats here as well, and I think we're probably not going to lose the game to these Barbs. If the Bats just end up doing enough. Oh, they don't do enough. We're in a very bad spot. Well played. Actually, still can defend this, maybe? Oh, no, not even. Dang. Goblin Giant Evo Barbs are built different, I guess. I could have played that a little bit better for sure, but at the same time... If you look at it, I have no way of stopping the Elixir Collector. He's guaranteed to get positive Elixir Traits and then likely overwhelm me. That's the problem that we have with your deck. Doesn't necessarily work so well into people that, uh, you know, kind of sort of maybe get Elixir Advantages with the Collectors. Nice. We vibe with that pretty heavily. But the cool thing is the Monk is so obnoxious for everyone. 
Break the ability. Barbrill. He's going to go drop Barbarians. Hopefully we can kill them. Be very cool if the Firecracker doesn't die. Yeah, the Firecracker didn't die for a minute. Right, let's go Wallbreakers. He's going to rage up his tower if he's good, which he is good. He's not bad. Oh. That's interesting. Very cool. Three Goblin Giant and instead kind of giving us a way to wiggle our way back into the game. I mean, it should still be a loss, but it's always possible. Okay, actually, we do take the tower here. Very nice. We can Barbro on the... Uh... Right, we're going to Arrows here. Bats. Yeah, we just lose. I think one of the difficulties with your deck is if you do match into an Elixir Collector deck, uh, you don't necessarily really have any big spell. Also, the other issue that I see with the deck is... I mean, it, it's not necessarily very well equipped to deal br with bridge bam you have very very limited answers for it like you have bats and firecracker which are kind of flimsy right they don't necessarily deal very well against like mini pekka's e-barbs goblin giants right um you have a monk which costs a lot of elixir costs five but you do have barbro and fisherman you can kite with wall breakers it's just i guess in that matchup you just have nothing for elixir collector all right so i would rate that deck a six out of ten my guy um, I think the concept is kind of cool, running it with Monk and Wallbreakers. But again, like having no big spell in this meta means that you really need the Wallbreakers to connect. And if the Wallbreakers don't connect, you just lose. Imagine my opponent has a building and a fast cycle deck. I lose every game, man. There's no way I win. Like if they've got Tombstone, Fast Cycle, Graveyard. Like legitimately, if they just played the Graveyard deck that I won with last game, instant loss. Instant, instant loss. You can't beat it. Um, Sir Superman. You do an Evo, Knight, Hog Rider, Archer Queen, Ice Spirit, Cannon, Bond Tower, Log Delivery. Yeah, I can play that. I can run that. That seems like a pretty good deck. I mean, um, we, we generally shy away from super standard decks, but um, I'm willing to play an Evo Ice Spirit for you today. I'm down. I'm down. Also, I, I thought that the, the deck's name was Sue, Sir Superman, but hopefully, um, <laughs> hopefully that's what the deck's name is. <laughs> I don't know if you're calling me that. Dude, Ice Spirit, Cannon, Bond Tower. All right, all right. Wait. Cannon or Bomb Tower. Okay, okay, okay. I was like, Cannon and Bomb Tower? Like, what craziness have we been falling into, my guy? That would be wild. We are going to have some pretty insane games. There's no doubt about it. I think Delivery is pretty broken, though. I think Delivery is one of the best cards in the game right now. It's so good. It cleans up pretty much everything in the game. And it cleans up Evil Bomber. The negative one trade, but it's still really solid. All right, so... We're going to run that. We're going to run Archer Queen. We're going to run Cannon. We're going to Log, Knight, Hog. All right, Knight, Hog. Where are they at? Hog Rider. Dude, they really should make uh, Evo Ice Spirit a lot better than it is. It's kind of sad. Like, the card is just awful compared to Skeletons. Do you see anyone else doing that? I don't think so. All right, we'll put in the Queen and then we'll win. Get after it. Let's see if uh, Evil Ice Spirit actually can uh, can be decent. Also, let's not put the cannon here as all of our cards. I'll only do it if you guys give me like a really uh, unfortunate deck. I'll put the cannon here in. <laughs> let's go, let's go. Can you try my deck? Uh, you got to type it in the chat, man. Asking me to try your deck means that I'm not going to see your me next message. Like, it's hard to see a lot of messages at once. I try my hardest to incorporate as many decks as I can in these videos, and I'll tr probably stream for two or three hours. So, you know, if you're if you're here spamming your deck, there's a chance that I'll be able to play it. But if you uh, are asking me questions about possibly testing out your deck, then, you know, you're decreasing the likelihood that I see it. All right, we're just going to deliver here. Should deliver it on top of the bar, but I didn't. I didn't know that interaction. I thought that the fly machine was actually uh, gonna possibly kill it and then hit my tower, but I was very wrong. The barb did way more damage. Hey, at least we got some hits on the left hand side. Maybe it wasn't all for naught. I'm gonna go in for a knight here. We know that his evil bomber is gonna be four cards away right now, so that's good for us. We're gonna have golem evil bomber, so kind of uh, a strategy that a lot of people. Wait, do I? Oh, I'm an idiot! I'm actually an idiot. There's no way. There's no way. There ain't no way. There ain't no way I just did this to myself. There ain't no way. Oh, guys. I caramba. This is not good. I caramba. 
Uh, this is this is truly a tragic time for us. This is not Moi Bien. Alright, I also should have clicked the ability there. Okay, we'll go next game. Um, that was unfortunate, to say the least. I cannot believe I put two buildings in the same deck. You definitely do not have two buildings in the same deck. We'll run it back for you. We'll run it back for you. That was, uh, that was truly the gameplay of all time, though. Truly gameplay of all time. <laughs> let's go, let's go. All right, all right. That was, uh, that was not it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, that was insane. Yeah, he had Earthquake in there, I believe. My bad. He definitely had Earthquake in, in there instead of that. There's like no way. <laughs> uh, we'll test out your deck. We'll test out your deck the way it's intended to be played. I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry for that. All right, going ahead and give someone else's deck a chance. Uh, it's not fair for me to build a deck and then misuse the deck and then say that the deck's bad or whatever when I like messed up. So, you know, like at least, uh, you know, I, I am playing someone else's deck. Like I'm still playing not my deck. This is not my deck. Yo, Evo Bomber's everywhere. It's crazy how strong it is. Seriously insane. All right, so we got to go Ice Spirit, most likely, depending on what he does. Yeah, definitely have to Ice Spirit on that. If anyone goes in for pigs, you have to make sure that they don't lock under your tower for too long, because that sucks when that happens. All right. So we'll go Hog Rider here, and then we'll go Earthquake, because we have the Archer Queen still alive. In Single Elixir, this matchup is actually in our favor. In Double Elixir, it gets a lot worse. <gasps> he messed up! Yo, let's go! The Queen's still alive, too. She's going to get a hit. At least one. Aww. Come on, bro. All right, all right. So strategy against Royal Hogs, if you guys are unaware, they'll probably pre-earthquake your cannon every time. Just go delivery and go log on top of their Royal Hogs every time, and then you'll get a good trade. Also, don't spam uh, emotes if you guys are ever watching. Um, I do remove people that do that uh, on my friends list that spam emotes, because sometimes like they'll drop like a laughter thing and it'll block um, the uh, screen. <laughs> they'll block the, uh, the unit. Like if the knight's off on the side, sometimes the spectator emotes can block it. Uh, all right, we'll go Archer Queen here. Crazy how he just got back in the game off that, but you know, it is Clash Royale right now with Evo's city. It ain't pretty. All right, that's going to get a hit. Please, let's go. We're back in business. All right, so he's probably going to mess up. So I think we're fine against the Royal Hogs. Oops. Go here and let's Earthquake on top of the cannon. All right, how good is this Ice Spirit going to be on defense here? That's the real question. Where's the freeze, my guy? Okay, it's not bad. Wait, yo. Yo, Evo Ice Spirit. We, we we got away with murder there. That was like 700 extra damage or 500 extra damage than him. That was really, really good. So I can guarantee you with almost 100% certainty, he's going to go and drop his um, Evo Bomber. All right. I think we win this. Interaction, at least. We can log on the Evo Bomber and it's dead, so that's huge. Or we could activate King. I think either works, really. Do this. Ah, that was kind of bad on our end. I wasted a lot of Elixir. Stop! Drop and roll! Dude! There's no way that those Evo Skeletons... Dude, there's no way! Oh my goodness, chill, stop it. Why are they still alive? Yo, Clash Route, please nerf that card. Oh my goodness. There's no way that they're that broken. That's actually insane. I like earthquakes. I did things. All right, well, we lose. Um, Maybe they'll balance that. I don't know. I, I hope they play their game a little bit more than they do. That's not a very good interaction. <laughs> Oh, um, I, I saw like something earlier where someone dropped a tornado, a zap, sorry, a tornado and had a bomber and then also ended up having like the lumberjack die and they couldn't kill Evo skeletons. Like one elixir killed a golem, didn't die to tornado, which was three elixir, didn't die to a lumberjack dying and then spilling the rage on top of the skeletons. 
And then the bomber still wasn't able to kill it. And it just killed like 20 worth of elixir. It was so sad. So yeah, um, for me, I don't think that Evo Ice Spirit's even competitive. I, I just, it's not good. Unfortunately, like it, it can be good in situations where you're trying to break through and defend minimalistically. But when you compare it to a card like this, that just breaks the game, you kind of need to be running cards like Evo Knight, Evo Skeletons, Evo, um, Evo Bomber. Like those are the three best evolutions in the game if you want a competitive deck. Your deck is still pretty good though. I would rate it like a seven out of 10. It's just not broken like the other decks in the game right now. All right, uh, Classic Log Vein. I'm not playing Classic decks. Uh, we just play Classic decks. We want something unique, interesting, fun. Um, okay, I mean, there's some different ones here. Evo Knight, Evo Bats, Goblin Giant, Sparky, Little Prince, Mini Packer Rage. That's still a mainstream deck. We're trying to look for some unique stuff. Packer Graveyard. Okay, I'll play that. I'll run it. I'll run it. I'll run it. So shout out to Smets Theo. Appreciate the, uh, <laughs> the craziness, my guy. Lots and lots of love. All right. So we're going to do Packer Graveyard. Log Little Prince. Let's go, let's go. Where it at? Where it at? Where's our Little Prince at? I don't... Oh, is it Ari? No, it's not in the deck. So buy Elixir. Am I blind? I have to be blind, right? I don't see it. Where'd the Little Prince go? I'm so confused right now. Oh, it's at the top. Okay, that makes sense. So Knight, Little Prince, um, Dark Goblin, Poison, Evo Knight. You have Dark Goblin in there. That's interesting. That's a little bit wacky, my guy. I'm here for it, though. I'm here for the wacky decks today. Heck of Graveyard, Evo Knight, Poison, um, Bowler. Oh my gosh, dude, this is crazy. This is actually insane. So you go Pekka Graveyard Bowler and Double Elixir. <laughs> dude, what is this? What is this wacky deck? All right, so there's one more card that we're missing. Dark Goblin Log. Okay, we're missing Log. All right, we got the entire deck then. That's it. That's it. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Sir Tag, I'm a Serenity Peak player and I'm free to play. What should I use? You can check the pinned comment. Uh, I have a series on pushing up as a free-to-play player, and I have an entire series showing how to beat that with log bait. You can push to the highest arena using the series and deck that I've been showing. So check that out. Yo, a Photomic uh, Gaming with a $5 dono says, can you play my deck? Evil Firecracker, Minor Poison Tornado, Bomb Tower, Delivery, and Log. Yep, your deck will be next. Thank you for the $5 dono, and I appreciate the support, man. Lots of love. Your deck actually seems pretty good. Also, for future reference, just in case, uh, Minor and Clash Royale is actually spelled with an E. I see a lot of people do that. I just like, uh, just want to let you guys know so that you don't <laughs> type the wrong Minor because, you know, that can be problematic sometimes. <laughs> anyway, we are playing against someone that's got a Love Hound deck, and he's probably not anticipating the Dark Goblin. So, um, our deck is a bit crazy. Uh, we're, we're, we're popping off right now. Dude, there's no way. This is actually hilarious. We can Knight on defense and we're going to pull back all the Lava Pups. 100%. The bad thing about your deck is the cycle sucks. It's very slow. No, I don't have anything for this balloon because I was forced to use our poison. I think I lose my entire tower here. The good thing that we have rolling for us is literally Bowler Pekka. So I, I kind of vibe with that. We'll just see how well this works. I don't like that he's got arrows for our Dark Goblin. We have really no other arrows bait in our deck. If you think about it from the perspective of, I don't have other arrows bait in my deck. Why do I have a Dark Goblin? You might be saying the Graveyard Skeletons, but that's not a reasonable thing, unfortunately. We're literally bowling here and just hoping our Little Prince kills everything. Like, Little Prince has to kill every card that he's got for the air cards. And it's not going to be able to. At least the Barbarians are dead, so that's good. He's got to arrows on top of Dark Goblin, which is horrible for me. If he arrows is on the Dark Goblin right now, I'm pretty sure he just balloons and takes my tower guaranteed. I mean, Poison does deny all but one hit, so there is that. 
No Dark Goblin Evolution, my guy. Not yet, at least. Okay. What if we, like, peck a graveyard here and left? Go, Pekachu! I choose you! Dude, he looks at the peck and he's like, why is this guy adventurously endeavoring with a P.E.K.K.A.? But I can't be tamed, my guy. That's what we do. Yo, wait, this is kind of working? Somehow? All right, say less. He ended up dropping a million worth of elixir into a poison, so we take that. We go knight here to kite this Megami to the other side. Then a fireball. Little Prince is dead. If he balloons me, I actually just lose my tower. But if we graveyard... Yo, is there a will? Is there a way? Is there a strategy to be made? We're to poison here to slow down the balloon? There's no way I defend this, guys. There's no way. <laughs> no way! <laughs> I overcommitted like crazy. Dang it. Alright, there's still a chance. But I, I, I mean, this is not a favorable situation for sure. Well, we knew he was going to do that, but... Maybe we can finesse our way through? Wait, actually? Straight up, like, say less, right? I'm not defending this, so, like, let's just spam. Spam and pray is literally the only way. We have to break through this Guardian, and I don't think it's going to do it, but... That's an L. Little Prince locked? Oh my gosh, it was so close. The log was rolling in. So yeah, the, the obvious difficulty for your deck... I could have played that better in one if I had, like, not focused on defense there. Um, the, obviously d the obvious difficulty is... You just do not have any answers to air besides Little Prince in your entire deck, and your deck is very slow. So if you match into a Lava Hound deck, and let's say they've got Tombstone and Arrows, which they a lot of people do have, we got lucky that the guy just had Arrows and didn't hard counter us even harder. Like, it could have been absolutely impossible. Um, your deck has a huge flaw. Uh, it doesn't beat air cards. Like, let's say he has Inferno Dragon Tombstone, automatic loss. So I'd rate your deck like a 5 out of 10. It's definitely got to have a lot of improvements. Um, if you're running a graveyard deck with P.E.K.K.A., you need to have anti-air responses, and you need to have resets so the P.E.K.K.A. just doesn't die. So, like, y maybe even an Electro Wizard in P.E.K.K.A. deck's graveyard is, is decent, but uh, it, it has to be a lot more sturdy on defense than this. It's not going to work at higher levels of gameplay. All right, let's check out the Minor Firecracker deck, because I think that that one's going to be cooking quite well. Let's take a look, let's take a look. As you guys can see, I don't really care about wins or losses more, so I want to test out your guys' decks, and we'll see where we end up at the end, but we did start up relatively high. I think we've started, like, top 2,000-ish, so losing a couple games along the way is kind of parkour for the course, I guess. Uh, all right, we'll run Poison Tornado, so we're missing the NATO. Firecracker, Bomb Tower, Knight. This actually looks like it can cook. This, this, this deck has some considerable cooking degree here. All right. Bomb Tower, Delivery, and Log. Also, since I did a lot of uh, decks that were free to play that you guys were like uh, suggesting, I will do some donation uh, ones. I've been kind of ignoring the donation ones. So this is going to be the first donation one that we've, we've done. Um, delivery, and then we want to use poison, minor, 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 just minor. All right, so this deck looks really good. Um, the, the bad thing about it is you have, in my opinion, you have too many cards that are spells. If you have log, poison, uh, delivery, like this impairs your card cycle quite considerably. Um, you'll see hands where I'll get delivery and, uh, three spells. You'll get like three spells in a building. Like, what do you do then? You cycle a spell on the tower, but, like, that's not great. It's better to go in for, like, Skeletons or Ice Spirit or something like that. That's the biggest downside of your deck is... I mean, if we're playing against Logbait or Graveyard, it's probably fine, but... If we match into other fast cycle decks, we might not be able to keep up with them. Because our card cycle is slow. Alright, so since we have 10 million spells, we're just going to spell that immediately. Take a negative one trade and do 320 damage. Then we're in a Miner here. And then we'll Firecracker, because the Knight's going to stay close to the tower. And then we can activate King Tower here. So I think we just win the game already. Um, as you can see, like, I guess if we are lucky enough to match into someone with Hog Rider, 
it's not necessarily going to be a very good ride for my man going directly into a tornado or a bomb tower. So I do vibe with that. Time to lose brain cells, brain cells, Jake. Try Mega Knight, Tesla, Dark Goblin, Skeleton Army, Electric Spear, Fireball, Musketeer, or Dark Prince, Little Prince. That doesn't even have a win condition, my guy. Um, one thing, if I lose a lot of games, I'm not going to play decks that I can guarantee that I will guarantee lose with. Um, if your deck doesn't have a win condition, it kind of like throws it out of the pool. So, I mean, I will do that and I'll screw around a little bit, but I'm not going to play as many decks with uh, zero win condition. If you don't have a building targeting card or you don't have a way of winning the game, um, I can't really play it because it, it should be a loss at top 2000. Opponents we're playing against are not bad enough to lose against that. Um, yeah, the, the issue when you don't have a building targeting card is it will just get distracted the entire time. Like, let's say your Mega Knight or Pekka is the way that you win the match. What happens is the opponent's going to drop a tombstone. They're going to drop a building. They're going to drop, like, um, I don't know, skeletons to distract you. And your Pekka will never break through. It should. You need a card to actually win the game, if that makes any sense, which should make sense to everyone. But just want to throw that out there because sometimes people don't really get it. All right, so we're getting Evil Firecracker here on top of the knight, but it's better to go Bomb Tower and use NATO, possibly, because uh, then he's not able to get the damage that he's looking for. So just take this, I guess, and deliver. Very cool. Very, very cool. That was cash money. That was insane. Uh, we're to knight, and he's going to go for Skeletons, which is not good on his end, and then he's going to end up uh, taking Firecracker damage. But yeah, we just outplayed him, and he also got a bad matchup. So those are two things that are uh, not in my guy's favor here. I I feel like this is just absolutely brutal. He, he is getting destroyed right now. And that's what happens like when you activate King Tower against Graveyard, for instance, or like you just get a good matchup and you're a decent player in Clash Royale. It's just it's really, really hard for you to lose certain situations. So GG. I mean we took a little bit of damage at the end because I messed up the tornado, but it didn't really matter. Pretty light work. So your deck, uh, it needs to not have four spells and a bomb tower. Looks really good when you're playing against Hog Rider, but if you match into like Expo and you have no way of distracting or cycling, you just fall flat on your face and instantly lose. So I would really, really, really recommend removing probably either Log or Delivery and then putting in either Skeletons, Goblins, or, or Guards. And then the deck seems a lot better then. Personally, I prefer Skeletons or Guards. I don't really like Goblins that much anymore. All right, so uh, this deck overall right now is an 8 out of 10 for me. It's just not great because you have a bad cycle. Um, so that's the only thing that's dragging it down. Try Evo Bomber, Evo Firecracker. Oh my gosh. My man is going for blood right now. The $5 dono of Bebo, uh, Bebo Squeaker days. He literally decided to put the most two annoying cards in Clash Royale in a deck. He is that guy. He is that guy. Oh, man, you are actually going to get me flamed to a different degree. You're going to get people to unsub, unsubscribe, dislike, hate me for eternity. They're going to post Reddit things about me just because of your deck, bro. You you are doing this to me. Imagine. I, I can't believe it. I can't. It's inconceivable. All right, so we're going to throw in a fireball as well. Might as well run it. And then we want Mega Knight, Ram Rider, Skeleton Army. Woo! All right, guys, we're figuring out uh, where the cards are a little bit more effectively. Are you guys proud of me? Like, I'm not spending a million hours trying to find out, where's the skeleton army? Like, I can see it. I just go in. Oh, I misclicked. <laughs> so some, some of these cards are level 14. Doesn't really matter. I think we're chilling. Uh, we do want Evo Firecracker and Evo Bomber, though, instead of the, the Knight. So, All right, real quick. This is your deck. Play it. Go, dude. Also, thank you for the donos, guys. I do have to say, I will not be able to play every single donation messages deck, but I will try to do as many as I can, along with the people that are free to play. If you guys, you know, are just typing your thing in the chat, there's a likelihood that I use your deck even without you donating money. Uh, I will pick some of you guys over the donation people as well, because I just want everyone to be included and I want this stream to be, I don't know, showcasing as many of your de guys' decks as possible. If you guys enjoyed this type of content and you enjoy me live streaming and putting out a ton of, um, content using your guys's decks 
leave a like on this video and then I'll do it more frequently. But leave a like and subscribe if you want to be a part of it the next time to get notifications. Or just to support me, um, like and subscribe. But yeah, we want to cycle our, our evolutions as much as possible because they are the strongest cards in the game. That's why we're going to be prioritizing cycling them. All right, we're a little prince up in here. Let's go, let's go. No deck. Have you been mewing? Also, how much dono for a shirtless stream? <laughs> Unfortunately, my guy, I do not think we will be doing a shirtless stream. I, I might like eventually post like a shirtless picture at the beach or something, but that's about it. That's all you'll ever get. I'm sorry, my man. That's uh, that's that's the extent of it. Um, uh, also for mewing, I Riley. Said, like Riley made a lot of jokes about that. He's like, yo, dude, I, I mew all the time whenever I'm in photos or like everyone asked if he was mewing. I didn't know what it meant. And then I was like, oh, so apparently it's something like to strengthen your jawline or something. That's at least what people were telling me. I did not know what that was. All right, can we activate King? That'd be very cool. All right, we messed it up. But the Spear Goblin should be able to counter the Hog Rider. If you guys are unaware, Hog Rider gets full counter by level 14's Goblin Hut. Goblin Hunt's underrated, as Cashman would scream. Imagine. Oh my gosh. Wait, wait, wait. He's not going to expect this. There's no way. Because he's going to see, like, the Firecracker. He's going to like, oh, no way. And we just Evil Bomber him at the river and do 400 damage. It's so funny. Even if he activates King, it doesn't matter that much. I'm okay with it. I used your Recruit deck and upgraded, uh, replaced Zappies with Evil Bomber. Struggle with Air. Would you suggest Tesla over Goblin Cage? No, I would never, 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 never use Tesla over Goblin Cage in that deck. The reason is, the Goblin Cage allows you counter push. So one of the main mechanisms of that Recruit stack is you drop the Goblin Cage in the middle to passively cycle. And then because of that, you're able to go in for um, super aggressive plays that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Because the Goblin Cage is able to counter push, whereas the uh, other like Tesla would just sit on your side of the map and accomplish nothing. Food for thought, my guy. Food for thought. Alright, we're gonna click this. Yo, is he cooked or nah? Is he cooked or nah? I hope that doesn't nah hit my firecracker. Alright, we can fireball his firecracker, right? Wait, how's my firecracker not dead? Stupid evolutions, dude. They seriously just don't die. Like, for real. I wish I was joking. This just seems insane that the cards are this strong. Alright, the firecracker doesn't kill that, right? Doesn't kill it in time, at least. I'm trying to keep up the pressure so then his Tesla just gets destroyed so we can go in for an evil bomber. Idealistically, we win with this. I think he has to... Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Alright, we lose. That was a really good earthquake on our opponent's end. Credit where credit is due. He's not a bad player. He's going to try to earthquake cycle. Yeah, he's, he's smart. He's not a dumb dumb. GG. So, I guess if you have Earthquake into a spawner, you probably have a pretty intrinsic matchup advantage. Um, also, one of the reasons why spawners kind of suck right now, but I do think that uh, Goblin Hut, as I said, is underrated. Compared to all the other spawners, like Barb Hut or uh, Furnace, I do think that Goblin Hut is a lot better. So, having an underleveled win condition, not ideal, but it is what it is. Um, so, I really wasn't able to test the full strength of the deck. Uh, I give it like a 7 out of 10. I don't think it's great. I think the biggest weakness is, again, if you play into an Earthquake deck, you're kind of kind of have to use like your Ram Rider and then your Mega Knight on defense more so. And if you get stuck in a situation where you have to rely on Skeleton Army and your opponent's good enough to make predictions on it, you're just going to instantly lose. Well played by the opponent. Well played by the opponent. Great Earthquake prediction. Uh, but he also knew that I had no availability of making any other play. So, smart decisions. All right. Uh, if you want, you can try this Madness Pekka Wallbreakers Hog Rider Firecracker Little Prince Evo Skeleton Zap. Yep, I'll check it. Thank you, Zane. I appreciate the five dollars as well. So Pekka Wallbreakers is pretty fun. I think that anything with Pekka, like I'm drawn to the concept of the card because it's so freaking cool. It's sitting there with two swords, you look at it and you're like, man, this is dope. And then you look at it a little bit more and you're like, wait, it doesn't doesn't do what it should. <laughs> Pekka is just so weak and fragile. So I wish he was a bit stronger of a card, but I mean, hey, that's that's Clash Royale for you. Like some cards are just intrinsically weaker than others. Unfortunately, that is uh, something that they have not buffed yet. If there, are, if I was in charge of the game, I would buff Electro Wizard. I buff Pekka. I would probably buff cards that are just 
you know, not good that deserve to be buffed. That are fun cards that are actually good for the game. Like, if a P.E.K.K.A is buffed, no one's going to be like, wow, I hate P.E.K.K.A so much. I, I, I'm i so sick of P.E.K.K.A's reaching my tower and taking my... Like, there's just no way, right? So, I'm fine with buffing those type of cards that are intrinsically, like, a bit worse. Um, or haven't been updated in forever. And then there's all these other cards that just kill it. Um... Wallbreakers, Hog Rider, Evo Skeleton, Zap. Arrows. Oh, I'm missing arrows. Missing one more card, I think. One, two, three, four. Oh, Firecracker. There we go. Let's run it! you check the super chat, please? I will check all the super chats, but I'm not checking them immediately. Like, I check them as we go. I'm checking them as we go, my guy. All right, we'll go skellies here. And then, uh, yeah, there's a lot more that I haven't read yet. There's so many messages to read. There's so many messages to read. Evo Bomber um, is really strong, but Evo Wallbreakers are a, a contender for one of the best new evolutions. Wow, guys, thank you so much for all the donuts today. I really appreciate that. All right. I did mess this up a bit. I shouldn't have probably went for the P.E.K.K.A. like I did, but it, it's still okay if I can get back to a Zap and then Skeletons. I do have to Zap this so I can get to Skeletons so I don't, like, lose. Okay, I was I was really wondering if I was going to get the Skeletons down or not. And we did, so that's good. But as you can see, P.E.K.K.A. by itself, it, it just gets distracted and it doesn't do anything. I just died to Skellies there, and that's 7 Elixir, right? So it's just like, as a concept of a card on offense, it's very weak. Since we see Mini P.E.K.K.A. and uh, a reluctancy to cycle like that much else other than like Sparky related cards, I'm fully anticipating a Sparky deck. I also don't want to zap on top of the Sparky right now. I want to use it on defense. I could zap on the Sparky for more damage, but then I might lose the game, so... I try not to lose games against Sparky players when I feel like I have a matchup advantage. Um, greeting for extra damage is not worth it because a lot of times they'll just give the damage and all in you. One thing that I have noticed. Why did this guy say good luck and then proceed to lose the game like just getting destroyed? I think we got to say good luck to him. <laughs> the one thing that motivates me a lot is like when someone bms me or says like good luck or like haha i've won and they're not as good as me or they're just like like i don't know like especially when i'm at like lower ranks or something um and i can like mess with them a bit more and win it's so much more fun when that happens at higher ranks, when people are at my skill level or whatever, or better than me, and they do it, it's like, oh no, I lose. Like, when we're kind of screwing around like today, and we're testing out different decks, and we're a bit lower than we would typically be, it's very funny when people do this, because I can definitely control the flow of the game a lot more. We can go and kite that back. We should have zapped, honestly, but it is what it is. Wallbreaker connects. We're going to go in for a zap here. I bet you he goes in for a bad prediction or something. He might try to drop arrows, like, on skeletons and freak out. It'd be very funny. We're going to say good luck again, because I think he really needs it right now. He needs a lot of luck to come back in this game. Um, <laughs> the very few times that we will ever BM is, like, when someone does it first, because... Honestly? Um, oh, my goodness. Yeah, honestly, it's it's one of those things that you should never do. If you, um, if you aren't as good as your opponent, and you're running a super skillless deck... And you think you're going to win? I don't know. I think Karma bites him in the butt a little bit. It's fun. It's, it's rewarding when that happens. Obviously, emotes are just not anything serious, but I think it's it, it makes him look a little bit silly, and I like that. Um, what else are we doing? What other decks are we going to do? Uh, I forgot to mention uh, you can try Cannoneer. Oh, yeah. I'm trying not to use Cannoneer too much because it's very pay to win. Um, it's actually, it used to be trash, but it's very, 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 very unfair in specific decks. Like Cannoneer is very broken with Graveyard, very broken with like minor uh, Poison Mortar. There are certain decks that use Cannoneer that enable uh, the defenses that should not be possible. So 
Um, I'm trying not to use Kananir too often in my videos because not everyone wants to spend $60 to get it. Evo Knight, Evo RG, Fisherman, Fireball. Yo, Danny, thank you for the $20, my guy. Dang, dude. Thank you so much. Wow. Guys, by the way, um, one of the highlights of my week, uh, I found a place uh, in Seattle that fills me up in sushi. Like, I am full after $15 of sushi. Imagine. Like, I eat a lot of food. And it's good quality. Like, I don't even know how they, like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how they are able to run a sushi place like that. But there's a, there's a sushi place in Seattle that I love going to that is $15, basically, for an entire slab of sushi. And you can pick out and customize whatever you want. It's amazing. Usually, like, you guys get scammed because um, it's, like, rice and barely any unagi or barely any fish. And you're like, wait, what is this? And why am I spending $15 for six small dinky rolls? But that made me really happy. The small things in life when that happens, like, I got to share it with you guys because it just makes me, I don't know. I mean, it was a really good positive thing where you're like, you are conditioned to expect to get scammed by almost every restaurant that you go to. From that perspective, it's just like really hard for them to, um, I don't know, for sushi places at least. I think it's 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 hard for people not to have high prices for whatever reason, or they just always do upscale sushi. Or maybe the profit margins aren't as good as I thought they were. I don't know. But yeah, that is something that um, I was just mystified by because I've never seen it before. If you guys ever have experiences like that where uh, you, you've seen something all your life a certain way and then you have something pleasantly surprise you, it's it's a beautiful experience. All right, so we are missing some other card. Goblin Cage. All right, so I really like this deck, actually. I really, really, really like the concept of this deck. If I lose with this deck, I'm actually just bad. Like, I'm going to straight up say this. I really like the concept of this deck. Actually... Never mind. There's one thing I dislike. You have way too many ground cards. You don't have anti-air. These bats are not it, Chief. You gotta figure something else out. I mean, if we match into Lob Hound, we're screwed. But if we match into anything else in the game, we're in a great spot. There aren't that many Lob Hound players in the meta. I guess we'll find out, right? We'll mess around and find out. I went to a place recently where it was $14 a person, and you could get all you can eat with rolling plates and almost 16 different meals it was crazy this project really dude that gives me faith in humanity my guy <laughs> let's go <laughs> let me know in the chat if you guys have ever been scammed by anything um i remember very specifically uh one of my very first dates with my first girlfriend ever i went to a uh, we went to a show together and the taxi ride back was the only way to get home we were forced to take it. And I was just watching it go up and up and up. For like a 15-minute ride, it was over $100. And I sat there, and I was just... I was like, no, this is awful. And then the guy afterwards, he's like, oh yeah, the tip is not included. And I was just like, dude, you scammed me. <laughs> like, I really said that. I straight up told him, like, this, this really feels like a scam. Because I've never seen anything like that. A 15-minute ride being $100. There's no way that a tip was not included in that. Like, I don't know. It, it, I just paid it because obviously you kind of have to in that situation. But damn, that was definitely one of the worst moments I've ever had on any date or any experience or, or scams in general. Like it just, I felt so hopeless. I felt like I had to, I felt like I had to pay it. It's one of those weird things where you're in like this mutually binding contract where you don't necessarily know the price, but by going into the taxi, you agree to pay it. Like, Obviously, at some point, at some absurd scale, you wouldn't pay it. Like, at $200, I wouldn't have done it. I would have been, like, I don't know. I would have, like, called the cops or something. Like, I don't know. Like, there's, there's literally, like, I wouldn't have been able to negotiate out of that. Or, like, $300 for 15 minutes. Like, you wouldn't pay it. So, like, at what point and what do you do when that happens? Can someone let me know? Because I've been wondering this for a while, actually. It's been something that's been on my mind. Let me know. Oh, uh, audio had static? I'm sorry about that. Anyway. We're going to Royal Giant in the back. Uh, we'll make this happen. We'll try to cook here. Go here. Knight to pull back the Inferno Dragon, ideally. And then Electro Spirit. Reset it. Beautiful. Really, really good defense on our end. I played that pretty much perfect. I should have Fireballed on top of the Inferno Dragon. But as you can see, I guess one of the main weaknesses of this deck is we do not have answers to Inferno Dragon. 
at all in the attack. Zero. Like, literally zero. <laughs> so I'm out here just kiting Inferno Dragons around and not being able to kill them. <laughs> this doesn't feel good, man. I'm not going to fib. I, have no I can't fib. I, I wish I could fib, but I can't. Dude, like, how am I defending this? Does anyone know how I just defended that? Like, what the hell? There's no way. There's no way that we stopped all that. That was so difficult. Stop it, bro. Calm down. All right, what a fireball here. Kabats, like, rage it up. I don't know. If he doesn't zap this. Evo RG? I mean, do we have to, can we kill that? Dude, I have to RG, but I can't because I have to defend against the, hot, uh, the, the, the aggressive miner. I'm just dead. Yeah. I, I think I played that pretty much perfect, but there's nothing you can do in that situation unless you like fireball earlier. If I fireballed earlier on the Inferno Dragon, actually, on the left-hand side, I did more damage earlier on, I would have actually won the match. That is the reason why I lost. I could have played that better. I played that really well towards the end, though. The defense in the middle was clean. So I like your deck if it had anti-air. If you had Little Prince in there instead of Bats, or sorry, Little Prince, I mean, what if we did something like this, my guy? I don't, I honestly don't think we need that. I honestly don't think we need the Evo Knight, my guy. You need air defense though. You do need air defense. Otherwise your deck just doesn't work. I'm not joking. I would probably do this. No, but you want the Evo RG because of the rage. What if we did this? Let's run this. Let's, let's just, let's just like create a different version of your deck, Danny. I bet you this works better. No game audio? Yeah, I turned the game audio off. Deck. It should fix itself? Oh, uh, yeah, usually it fixes itself, but I try not to uh, hurt your guys' ears. They like turn it off for a little bit. So yeah, guys, what did you think about uh, my story or like my my situation? At what point do you guys just like not? Or what do you do? Is there a number? Is there something you can call if you get scammed that hard? <laughs> like, what do you do? <laughs> it has to be like a negotiation, right? Or like, there has to be some fair like law that stops that from happening. I was in Canada, by the way, so I didn't even know. I was like. That's why I use Uber I IMO. Yeah, I mean, I learned because like you have the price in front of you. Or you ask, like every single time I go in a taxi, I ask what the price will be before I do it. Unless it's comped by like, I don't know, one of the clients or something. Like if there's, if there's something that, uh, uh, if it's like Supercell or something else paying for it, then I don't really care uh, and they'll pay for it for us. But if it's myself and I'm paying for it, I always ask now. Because uh, that, that experience petrified me. It scared me. I think you live and learn. Yeah, yeah, you live and learn 100%. I feel like every experience in life, even if it's a bad one, like you can still get something out of it. It's not like you should be thankful for it. Because you should never be thankful for every single thing that happens to you. But I mean... Hey, uh, there are situations where you can be thankful for bad things um, in some capacity. Oh, that sucks. I'm not thankful for those wall breakers. <laughs> it's fine, though. Wait, you just used Zap. I think he might take an L. Let's see. He's raged up bats, though, bro. Electric Spirit? Yo, I think we just win. We just win. Honestly, I, well, I just... I think this deck slaps my guy. I think it slaps. To be honest, we just beat an Inferno Dragon deck and we weren't beating it before, my dude. Enough said. We beat said. That's what's up. It's cool that we get to run it back, you know? Like, we were on the struggle bus and now uh, our opponents are struggling. We're busting them down. Alright, I hate that card so much. Oh, we're still going to fireball here. Oh, did we finesse the Inferno Dragon? Yes, sir. Let's say less, my guy. Pain, chain, chain. Pain, pain, pain. 
My man's in disdain. <laughs> All right, we're sorry. I'm never going to sing again. You guys never hear that. Never in your lives, right? Promise. Anyway, we should have played this a lot better, but it happens. Today's been a long day. It's been a good day, though. It's been a really good day. And yeah, we're popping off. Uh, could you have a way of sending deck requests? Yeah, it's just in the chat. It's in the chat. So yeah, um, Danny, if I could improve your deck to this, I think you would have a really good deck, my guy. I vibe with this heavily. I honestly might make a video on this. We're going to keep this deck. We're going to keep this deck for the future. This is a very, very good deck, Danny. If we just made some adjustments and we removed your Evo Knight, because I don't like Evo Knight with Evo RG in that particular situation, when you have so many other ground defenses. With Goblin Cage and Fisherman, you don't have space for the Evo Knight, my guy. You just don't. And having Rage enables the Royal Giant to attack faster and your Evo Bats to attack faster so your Evo Bats can heal up quicker. I love that, man. I love that so much. We came up with something creative on the spot. And that's why I do these streams, by the way. I like getting inspired by you guys to create videos. I love just talking to you guys and getting new ideas that I would have never thought of before. And um, yeah, Danny, appreciate that. First, first part of the stream, within 56 minutes, we already have a good video idea. Thank you, Danny. Who's uh, say to kid donates $5 did not have a message there, but thank you for the $5, my guy. Um, Evo Valk, Firecracker, Gob Hut, Ewiz, Argos, Hog, Goblin Barrel, Poison. So after this donation message, next couple games uh, afterward will all be free to play. So right now, after this game is the time to spam the chat if you want me to use your deck. After this game that I'm about to play with Jurgen's deck. So thank you, Jurgen, as well for the, uh, the donation. Um, we got Evo Valk in the house. And then people that are donating, don't donate for a bit because I, I, I'll go back to donation messages, but I'm not going to do them immediately. So free to play people, you guys will end up getting, uh, you guys will be getting most of it right now after this game. All right, we're going to use Firecracker. We're going to use Evo Valk. We're using Goblin. Yo, you guys love your Goblin Huts. Damn, man. It's crazy. Even the Spear Goblin coming out of the hut and being excited for once. Oh, oh my gosh. You got two cards that are cards that I refuse to level up because they're not that good. E-Wiz as well. All right, all right. Say less. We got Hog, Goblin Barrel, and Poison, and Royal Ghost. Wait, we're missing another card, bro. You, you missed a card in your deck. I mean, I've already came so far, so I guess we're going we're gonna to do it. Throwing a Hog Rider soon. Hog Rider! All right, I'll never do that again. I'm sorry. Uh, Goblin Barrel Poison. We want the Goblin Barrel. We want the Riley in our deck, dude. Riley. So I assume we're missing like a, a Barbell or a Log or something. Your deck doesn't really make that. Oh, it's Rail Ghost. Uh, I don't like this. I'm not a fan of having uh, no small spell at all in the deck unless like the deck actually can work without it. And I don't think yours can. See how I don't lie to you guys? I just tell you how it is. <laughs> I don't like sugarcoating stuff, you know? We, we give you that tough love. Evo Valk is a trash evolution and then having Rail Ghost and uh, Valkyrie in the same deck is not good. Because you have two mini tanks essentially that both do splash damage. So they're fulfilling the same role, but they both are like slightly different roles. It's like having uh, a Kit Kat bar and then a Hershey's bar in the same day. And that's your entire meal. You're like sitting there with two candy bars and you're looking at them and you're like, I just, I just ate two candy bars. And you're thinking, where's my vegetables? Where's my meat? My man, you've got, you've got two candy bars right here and they are not looking that scrumptious. Uh, Hershey's is a trash tier candy bar, and it's equivalent to the Evil Valkyrie, honestly. All right. Anyway, we're getting after it. We're going to go for a Hog Rider because he just uses NATO. I do think that this is going to be a good co composition for us to go Goblin Hut and then go in for a Hog Rider. Because the Spear Goblins behind this might bait out the log. He doesn't have NATO, so he's guaranteed to take two hits. Beautiful. We could poison on that, but I'm not going to. We're just going to let the Valkyrie die. And then we'll go for a Valkyrie on him. He doesn't understand what's happening. He doesn't understand your guys' intelligence, all right? He, he can't comprehend. He's, he's not talented enough. He's not talented enough. He's looking at the deck and he's wondering, why did, why did Sir Tag just do that to me? 
You know, you deserve it, man. You deserve all this and more. All right, we're going to see if we can cook a little bit with a Goblin Barrel that he might not want to activate King Tower with. Oh, he's just going to NATO it back. Sheesh. When Royal goes to the river, constantly apply pressure. And then Valkyrie. Um, Mike, oh, sorry. I guess Miner is coming down from him. We're just going to do that. Go for a Hog Rider here. He might Executioner. This is kind of bad for him, though. <laughs> okay. The evil Valkyrie sucks. And she sucks. You've seen me, guys. It sucks to suck like the evil Valkyrie. She is not good. She wasn't even able to kill the firecracker. She had one job. She had one job. She can't even kill the stupid evil skeletons. Do you guys see the problem with the card? Do you see how actually awful the card is? It is not something I would recommend for my enemies to be playing. All right? It's just, it's not it. It's not it. It is literally the worst evolution in the game. Yes, she is worse than the Evolved Ice Spirit. That's how bad she is, all right? And I, I stand by that. At least the Evolved Ice Spirit can allow you to defend in clutch situations, and you might be able to win games if you're better than your opponent, and you, like, meticulously craft a position where you need only one Elixir to defend or delay a push, and you can win off that. So if we're really having, like, a hard case of Copium, then we can cope and be like, yes, we, we really love the Evolved Ice Spirit in some situations, but... Dude, the Evolved Valkyrie, she's just bad. She's just bad at the bone. I would never use her. I, I'm actually kind of surprised that we won and won so easily. But I do not think this guy enjoyed the game. He's, he's sitting there with the Hog Rider emote uh, thinking every five seconds, like, what did I just match into? <laughs> he gave us the clap. All right, Jurgen, we're gonna give we're gonna give you the clap for the deck. It was fun. It was, that was a fun experience. That was that was a that was a really funny experience. Your deck works at top three thousand seven hundred in the world. Uh, but I honestly don't love it. You have no log bait besides the Goblin Hut. So what I would do if I was a Hog Rider Earthquake player, I would log your Goblin Barrels. I would Earthquake on your Goblin Huts, and I would laugh at you because my Hog Rider would get hits and you would lose. So. Into the meadow where everyone's running Hog Rider Earthquake in a fast cycle, your deck gets slaughtered. Uh, if you match into mid-ladder menaces like that last guy, I guess you can win. Uh, but that's also like situational. I don't want to like say your deck wins this game and it was a slaughter fest and you destroyed them. I'm not going to say your deck is good. I'm still going to tell you how it is. Your deck has a lot of weaknesses. Uh, I don't like it. And I would swap it out for a Hog Rider Firecracker deck. You could run Poison if you wanted. Honestly, if we were gonna make something really quick on the spot just to help you out, um, let me see. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can just cook something for you real quick, my guy. We want a faster card cycle. Screw Evil Valkyrie, garbage card. Um, get her out of there. No one loves her. We're gonna go in. I mean, we could put in a Valkyrie if we wanted it. Like, let's just say like Hard Copium. My man really loves his Evil Valkyrie. Doesn't want to change it. Then I will still put Valkyrie in the deck for you. I'll keep it. I'll keep it. If you absolutely believe in it getting a buff or something. We'll put in the Valkyrie instead of the Knight, but Knight works as well. And then we're going to take that out. We'll probably put in like a Tesla or a Cannon or, I mean, if you really, 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 really wanted to, you might be able to keep that. Um, oh, geez. The E-Wiz has got to go though, bro. The E-Wiz has got to go. It's a, it's an awful card, um, at least in the meta right now. And then, honestly, we could maybe pack this. If we're really having hard copium and we're like, we need this. I'm trying to change your deck as least amount of ways possible. This might work. This might be a lot better, man. The reason is like either Goblin Gang will be able to counter Goblin Barrels. If they drop a Goblin Barrel on your tower, you can Goblin Gang in the back and it will be able to kill it. The poison still allows you to break through counter graveyard. And you have a decent fast cycle where at least you can use the Firecracker and Goblin Gang to bait out uh, spells. So then your Goblin Barrel is able to get value. But the Evo Valkyrie just sucks, and I really wouldn't use it. Um, yeah, so this is the, the substituted, improved version of your deck. Um, I would give this like a 7.5 out of 10. It's still not as good as some of the other decks that were suggested today. But I would recommend, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd recommend making these changes, and your deck would be a lot better. Um, there's a lot of good Hog Rider Earthquake decks that are even better than this. If you type in Sir Tag, Hog Rider Earthquake, there's so many of those that will pop up on YouTube. So yeah, if you guys ever are looking for a specific deck type and you're wondering... How does a fundamental um, successful deck of my archetype work? Or what is the best Royal Giant deck in the game? How, did, how do you build that? 
type in Sirtag and then Royal Giant, and then a ton of those will pop up and it'll show you my thought process and pro player's thought process behind crafting their specific deck. And that'll help you guys improve your own decks. Um, stealing from those ideas and, you know, integrating those into your own or just copying the deck outright will help you a lot. Anyway, let's get on to the next one. So I told you guys, we are making it happen here. Free to play decks, free to play players. Let's go. Uh, Evo Skeletons, Evo Firecracker, Earthquake, Tesla Goblin, Snowball, Goblin Gang Knight. What? Okay, I mean, I, I guess I'll play this. This looks really weird, but it's got some like puke emotes next to it. So Jake Stone, uh, yeah, I guess I guess we have a bone to pick with you, bro. We're going to go and use our skellies and we're going to make it happen. All right, so you said Evo Firecracker as well. My guys love Evo Skeletons. It's so broken though. Evo Skeletons need a nerf. Like if Clash Royale legitimately played their game as much as they should, that card would have been nerfed. Not joking, like two or three months ago. I am so disappointed in them that they have not nerfed that card. That is inexcusable over everything else that they've done to the game. The Evo Skeleton staying as, as they are is the most inexcusable thing. It is beyond stupid that they have not nerfed that card. Uh, the fact that it can stay alive throughout a poison is just disgusting. There are so many interactions where you can spend 12 worth of elixir, 20 worth of elixir, and it will all die to one elixir. And... Like, it'll survive Rage, which is crazy. Uh, it, not every single interaction, but when it does happen, it's just, it's game-breaking. It really is game-breaking. Anyway, that is the, that is my least favorite thing they did in the game. All right, so this deck already had Goblin Giant. Um, you did have Earthquake. You have Snowball for sure. Um... We want Knight in there. I, see, the thing about Knight, dude, is it's trash if you're not running the Evo. Like, it's not trash, but it's not good. You don't really want to use it in your deck. If you don't have the evolution, there's really no point. You should be running, like, Mini P.E.K.K.A. Or Dark Prince. Or a card that, like, has some extra utility um, for one extra elixir. Like, Knight is a great card that works fundamentally with control decks. But with Goblin Giant, Evo Skeletons, and this type of stuff, it's not like you have Graveyard. It doesn't really make sense. Firecracker, Earthquake, Tesla. All right, I was missing the Tesla. Yeah, I don't like your deck that much. I mean, it's pretty defensive, but at the same time, you you have a random knight in there, and that should definitely be a Dark Prince or a Mini P.E.K.K.A. Like 100%. 100p, my guide. I would be swapping that out for Dark Prince instantaneously. Without second thoughts, without even testing it, I just know that that's not the play to run a knight in there. Galtons, I don't think reach the wall breaker. Sometimes they do, though. No, they do. That's cool. All right, that's awesome. All right, we'll go for Goblin Giant here since we do get counter push on both sides. Kind of worth. We don't have arrows. A little bit unfortunate, but it's fine. This ch uh, chat is filled with decks. Yeah, no, dude. I said I was going to do free to play decks. I, I'm a man of my word. I'm, I'm honoring it. We're doing it. We're doing it up. Thanks again for all of the suggestions today, guys. I love this community, and I'm super thankful to have people that, you know, want me to try out their decks, want me to uh, give suggestions, and care about actually watching my content. So thank you guys for being here. Really, really appreciative of that. All right, we're going to go Tesla as well, and we're going to keep rolling. Yo, yo, yo. We could go Goblin Giant. We could figure some other stuff out. Oh, that Firecracker is going to activate King. Wait, 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 wait. Remember? We learned this earlier that you can activate King Tower with the Evolve Bomber in this spot. Or you can drop it. Even though the Bomber's at like 0 HP, it'll still activate King Tower for you. Pretty stupid. But that's nice. Refreshing to see that. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Do you guys like how he just threw like the two most obnoxious evolutions at us? <laughs> Dude, he keeps going. Guys, no chill. <laughs> You know how stupid it is when you get to cycle a card at the river and it's a good play? Like, it's actually bad for the game that that's a good play. It's it's slightly sad. All right, we need 10 Elixir here. I don't know if this works. Let's run it. Nah, there's no way it works. Dang. He ends up dropping a billion Elixir. <laughs> 
dude, when I said a billion, I really meant a billion, I guess. He goes in for delivery, too. Dude, I did not expect. I did not expect the sauce. He decided to deliver everything he had. Oh, no. Tragic. We're so dead here. No! Stupid thing locked onto my tower! Alright, so in this type of situation, you have to cycle two Goblin Giants if you want to win. It's not a guaranteed result, but it is as good as we got. And we're going to have to Earthquake on that, and we're going to have to cycle two Goblin Giants, but it's unlikely that we break through. He's got uh, so much stuff, you know? You know the good thing about Goblin Giant? It's a zero cycle evolution. You just get it, you know? It works. Oh, I love this game so much. <laughs> what up? Future king over here. I, th I was a little bit silly thinking the wall breakers would die to a snowball, guys. I, I thought it I thought they might die for an even elixir trade, maybe. But gone went my tower. Alright, that was not it. <laughs> uh, fun deck though. I, I don't think it's good, um, personally. I think that you want it to be more aggressive. If you're running Goblin Giant, you rather have a Fisherman instead of a Tesla. And you could put in Bats instead of a Knight, maybe, for it to be super fast cycle. And then you can activate King Tower with a Fisherman, and you can still have Bats for the anti-air defense, giving you essentially what a Tesla does. Tesla has air defense, right? And it also has the ability to pull opponent's units the other side. But you're really having a flimsy offense because this Knight is a defensive card and this Tesla is a defensive card. And then you have an aggressive deck with Goblin Giant, Firecracker, Evo Skeletons. So you see there's a dichotomy and there's a split between your deck and there's no synergy. You want to have synergy with cards that are offensive and defensive. Maybe a Knight is better on defense, but you can make that concession to make a deck. All right, let, let's put it from this perspective. Right now, your deck's defense, this is like a very, very defensive deck in two attributes but they don't work with the other cards in your deck. You want cards that are defensive that also work with the cards in your deck. They can seamlessly integrate in defense and offense at the same time. So what I would do is do this. And the deck would work a lot better. Fisherman or Mini P.E.K.K.A. Either one works. Because you don't have Rage, I would probably put in a Fisherman. And then your deck just gets so much better. Like, this, this would actually work, man. This would actually work. Which is a good feeling. It's nice to have decks that actually work. Or a Dark Prince. Or a Mini P.E.K.K.A. Probably a Mini P.E.K.K.A. or a Fisherman, honestly. Um, and then that, that, that would do things. Might not be the best deck in the game, but it would be better than what you had. Um, and you could push up to, you know, the highest leaderboard. Or, or like, sorry, the highest uh, spot on ladder where you're 9,000 trophies easily. And Ultimate Champion with this deck. Guaranteed. If you're good enough with the deck. All right, let's take a look at some other ones. The more free-to-play decks. As I said with donations, I will be reading and going back to those in a little bit. I'm not doing donations right now because we want to give everyone a shot to be able to be in these. Eagle, Evo Firecracker, Evo Bomber, Poison Mega Minion, Mini Pekka Guard, Snowball. King Taco the third coming out with the big guns, my guy. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Also, always try to have your evolutions at the very start of the thing so then I don't uh, have to reorder things afterward. I'd appreciate that. Makes me happy. All right, so we're missing guards. What else are we missing? Mini P.E.K.K.A. Snowball Mega Minion. Wow, this is a fast one, my guy. We're speeding through this uh, deck creation process. Poison. That was honestly the fastest one that we did all day. Look at that. Light work. Quick shifts, changing gears, and we're rolling. All right, all right. Let's go. Mini Ron. What's up, Ron? All right. So downside of your deck right now is you don't have like a Skeleton King, uh, Skeleton King, or Battle Healer. You really want Elixir Golem with Skeleton King bait cards or a battle healer. Generally, that's how the deck functions at its full capacity. Um, it's not going to be as good if you're trying to break through with Evo Bombers and stuff like that, where you're not necessarily getting maximum value. Like, we've got Firecracker and we've got Evo Bomber, which, I mean, it works, but I think could be better, in my opinion. All right, we're going to Bomber on this as fast as we can. I should die. Very cool. Um, you're at 1,600 uh, Ultimate Champion. Oh, nice, dude. Congrats. So you are already an Ultimate Champion with this deck. 
That's quite cool. Let me see if I can help you improve it a bit afterward. I, I definitely can, <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Firecracker's going to lock. This is a bit risky for me to do because if he poisons like that, then... I mean, I'm going to get damage with the guards, but at the same time... Oh, maybe this is worth... How risky. I mean, if it's minor poison, it's not bad for me. Nice. Yo, it's so worth. So worth. Beautiful. All right, we're currently winning. You see how your deck is like kind of chip oriented? I don't love that. I don't love the fact that there's a lot of chip orientation with the deck. Um, with Elixir Golem, you generally want to be brute forcing your way through. If that makes sense. It should make sense to you. He's going to drop skeletons. I'm not going to snowball them. If only the guards could like reach over the river and kill that. Guards are so strong, though. Guards are extremely underplayed, um, but they're so, so good. Especially after they don't die to arrows. Like, that was just a bad decision. Whoever thought that that was a good balance decision by Clash Trial is just wrong. That is, that is unfair. It is very, very strong. It's a little bit too good. Which I'm not complaining about. I mean, I use guards in my main deck uh, when I push ladder, generally. Just, it's kind of broken, the fact that they stay alive for as long as they do. All right, what a poison. What we're looking here is to get value with all of our cards. So even though we're getting pretty bad trades with the Elixir Golem, we want to make sure his cards don't get counter pushed and aren't as scary. So blowing everything back. Guards are broken. Thank goodness. Uh, we're going to go Elixir Golem and then immediately Evo Firecracker. He's expecting the bomber. We're not doing it. Wow, that was a terrible miner. I'm surprised that he dropped that there. I mean, I guess he was trying to be unpredictable. I don't know. I mean... <laughs> We predictably broke through. <laughs> kind of vibe, you feel me? Go guards here. Uh, he's in a pretty weird spot. Mega Minion also as a card is just pretty weak, by the way. If you are unaware. If you're unacquainted. Unfortunately, it is a pretty weak card. But it stayed alive forever. Did Mega Minion get a buff? I feel like I buffed Mega Minion. He's got to go for a Tesla, so this is pretty bad for us. It does activate King Tower for him. Why didn't he let that activate King Tower? Interesting. That assault. All right, he's going to go wall breaker, so we make a prediction with the, the mini Pekka. Should be able to kill all of them. Oh, one of them hits my tower. That sucks. A little bit lucky on his end, not going to lie. All right, we should be able to one-shot all of these. No, one of them is going to connect again. Man, evil wall breakers are so broken. Crazy. I think I lose. I think we definitely play better than them too. It's just snowballed, I think, and then maybe I would have won. If I snowballed on that, I might have been able to beat him. Yeah, uh, yeah. If I snowballed that, I would have actually won the game because the um, the evil bomber would have hit twice. That's insane to think about. Like snowballing just in that one interaction would have given me like 800 damage. I would have won. Wild. So yeah, the downside of your deck again is like. If you're relying heavily on chip-based gameplay and you are playing against another deck that is chip-based oriented, you probably aren't going to win because you don't have like the brute force to break through. There's, re there's really no support with this Elixir Golem. So each time I drop the Elixir Golem, the Elixir Golem is just dying and it's not going to give me value. The issue with it is like there's no, there's no fundamental support for it. You're better off playing Goblin Giant because Goblin Giant's a much better tank for its elixir cost and better just in general. If you want to run the, this deck exactly, Elixir Golem should not be in the deck. It's very, 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 very bad in it. Um, you're just feeding your opponent elixir. Um, the card just isn't very strong. Uh, so if you want to run Elixir Golem, then I'm going to completely switch your deck a bit. Uh, just bear with me for a second. So I would run Bats almost always. And then you can pick Evo Firecracker or Evo a Bomber, but I wouldn't run both because it's too predictable. Like, you're always going to drop stuff at the river then. You want to pick one or the other. So, Evo Firecracker or Evo Bomber doesn't really matter. Then you put in Bats for the other one. I'd probably pick Evo Bomber since it's more broken. Um, I like Arrows. Goblin Gang slaps. Guards are great. But, like, if you're running, um, if you're running Skeleton King, which you should be playing um, with Elixir Golem, then you almost always want skeleton. You always almost want uh, cards that are more than a uh, guards, because guards don't give you that much. Guards really don't give you that much. But Goblin Gang gives you more souls for the Skeleton King to collect. 
And then lastly, what are we going to do here? We want one more card. We put in a little prince, which is optimal. Like if you if you actually have little prince, I would really recommend playing it there. But I'm going to assume that not everyone. Oh wait, we're already using skeleton king. Sorry, we can't. Um, do something like this, maybe. Probably some other cards. Um, oh rage, yeah. Honestly, I think this works really well. We'll play a game with it. Let's show it. You could run poison, or you could not run poison. I think either is fine. But yeah, I like this a lot more. Oh, Night Witch is fine too. Yeah, Night Witch works really, really well. So we could swap in a Night Witch here or arrows. Doesn't really matter. And we could run that. So kind of improving on your deck a little bit and making it better. We're going to play one game with your deck. Just because uh, I've seen you in the channel a lot and I've seen you uh, just be so supportive and nice. And you know, if people are like that, if I see you constantly in the channel, I'll try to do things to help you guys out. So. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I like having a consistent community of quality people. And uh, I want to say thank you for being here, man. Even though you are running a dirty, despicable Elixir Golem deck, um, you're the antithesis of that as a person. You're a good guy. At least from what I can see. All right, we're going to go for bats here. And then, yeah, I mean, so the strategy here really hinges on the fact that you can use poison and kind of like feel out what you're going to do. You see how I have ability of getting damage with uh, the Galton King and not necessarily always dropping Elixir Golem? If you just blazingly drop an Elixir Golem as your first play, kind of what happens in my experience is you're just not going to get the trades that you're looking for. You might die because the opponent will end up going in for a defense that you weren't ready to prepare an offense to counter. And if you go in for Elixir Golems and you overcommit, you just lose because the counter push will kill you. So what we like to do is we like finding the opportunities to do it. Like right now... I know that the Evolved Bomber is going to cause him a bit of grief. Um, this is going to be hard for him to defend. Like, super hard for him to defend. If he is able to even defend it, then he's still going to struggle because we can click the Skeleton King ability. And then we can poison the Archer Queen and also hit the Tower and hit the Royal Ghost. So notice how I'm like not randomly dropping my spells. I'm making sure that each allocation of spells is going to give me value over time. Like, the Ghost dies. We know that we can Rage on top of this as well. That's what we're going to do immediately. And just kill the Queen and then Rage up our Bats. And then if he Electro Spirits, which he should, he's probably going to drop it a little bit later. So he's not going to get the trade that he wants. Also, we know that he's going to have Fisherman based off of our other interactions with him. What happens when he tries to fix Fisherman and Elixir Golem? Well, we can go for Goblin Gang. We can do other things. We can make plays. We can we can play better than him and hopefully win. Um, this is kind of cool because not every deck is capable of doing this. Oh, um, well, sir, I'm astonished that you would do such a thing. The uh, audacity is real. Alright, we're just going to Rage it, do this. Um, Bomber. As you guys can see, he's in a horrendous position after that. And he's not going to be able to kill the Evolved Fats. He has to Fireball on it. I'm going to Rage this up so we can kill the um, Spam a little bit faster. He should Royal Giant me again. If he doesn't, he's crazy. Smart decision. Very good player. He should fireball on this. We'll see. He doesn't fireball on this. The RG is just dead. And then I think we're in a good spot. Oh, wow. He played that so well. He played that so well. Oh, my goodness. Did he play that well? Jeez, my guy. I hope we don't lose to you. Wait, we win. He played it well and it didn't even matter. See, this is this is this is the strategy that you want. You want something that beats people that are good at the game. This this is the strat, my guy. Not this, this. You want to have the ability to have more versatility. You with your deck, you had evolve firecracker and evil bomber, which seems really cool, right? Because you're always able to get chip damage with one of them at at the same time. Like you're always gonna have an evo that you can spam at the river and annoy the opponent. But when you're doing that, you're being predictable, which, you know, Mini Ron was able to defend and he, he knew that, hey, there's going to be a stupid card spammed at the river. I'm just going to body block it every time. Um, Oscar was like, wait, I don't know if there's going to be Evo Bats coming around the corner or Evo Bomber. And then, you know, we were really able to have more versatility and the ability to go in the opposite side with Bats as well to take the tower behind the Elixir Golem. You don't have that in your deck. You don't have an air card that's menacing. 
You don't have the bats from the Night Witch. You don't have the Skeleton King ability. You don't have the Evo bats that constantly heal up. You don't have the Rage to apply pressure instantaneously. Your deck is a lot more like... I can maybe get damage if they don't defend the card at the river. And then the Elixir Golem is just there. It's just there not giving any support. The deck that I showed, there's so much damage potential. There's so much outplayability. And there's so much like forgiveness for being bad at the game and winning. So that would be the deck that I would play if I was an Elixir Golem player that wanted to run a similar deck to the one that you're playing. But if you want to play your deck, put in a Goblin Giant. It's not as good as this Elixir Golem deck, but it works. Don't play Elixir Golem with that though. That this this does the, this just does not work. I would give it like a six out of ten, maybe five. Um, just doesn't like. If I'm being honest, I do, I don't like it because the elixir golem, um, win condition really makes the deck heavily good or heavily bad. And if you don't have a perfect synergy with elixir golem, it like punishes you to an immense extent. It's like, you know, um, in certain situations in life, you have very little wiggle room. You have very little leeway. Elixir Golem has very little leeway. That is the, the issue with it. All right, we're going to go back to some donation messages and play some of your guys' decks off from that. But yeah, that was cool to be able to play some free-to-play uh, people. Uh, all right, so Alia, uh, Alion, Al Alan Rivera. I'm so sorry I did not say your name correctly. Um, let's run it. Evo Firecracker Hog Cannon Little Prince Log. Oh my gosh. Can you guys not give me Electro Wizard for, for a hot sec, please? I'd appreciate it. Yeah, so Evo, um, Evo Firecracker is a common favorite amongst you guys, which, I mean, hey, it's cool. It's really good with Hog Rider. It's like nothing really that bad about it. It's just not as good as Evo Bomber, which, hey, I mean, if you guys aren't going to spend the money on uh, Pass Rao, it's fine. Like, just keep running Firecracker. That's also a thing. I'm a big proponent of not spending money on Pass Rao or not spending money on this game if you don't want to. Don't feel like you have to spend money to keep up with everyone else. Um, I'm also not going to lie to you guys. I'm going to say the Cannoneer is really unfair with specific decks. There's still a lot of people at top ladder that are not using Cannoneer uh, and actually don't even like it. Um, in some situations, I don't play it, but it is very broken in very specific decks. If you're playing Splash Shard, you can really suck at the game and win with that. It is so unfair. Like, you can be super awful. If you have Cannoneer, that is. All right, so Mini P.E.K.K.A. and Mega Knight. Also, guys, I've been working out every single day and it's still happening. I'm, I'm so proud of myself. Yesterday, I, I worked out for two hours. I hit the sauna and I went to bed early. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell, but yeah, I, I feel a lot better. I definitely look better than I used to. And hopefully I can continue this progress. Like I, I'm really stoked for it. So, yeah, I've been working out for months now. Uh, all right, we're missing a couple cards. Uh, Cannon, Little Prince. Oh, yeah, Little Prince. No, we're good. We're good. But yeah, the main thing that I would say to myself is like, I don't have time to work out. But then I realized that you get all the time back from work. You work out, your energy levels are higher, your productivity is higher. So all the time that you spend working out, you get back. It's like an instant reward. Um, you know, it, it. I'm sure you guys have had friends where you invest into friendships and the friendships don't necessarily uh like you're constantly giving 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 and you're never getting anything in return um and you're like oh man this friendship like this person doesn't care about me or whatever um that kind of sucks but like I, I, there, and there's habits that you can invest and invest and invest into and it never gives you anything back working out is like the healthiest relationship ever and it's with yourself it literally lets you get benefits and you you put in time you put in effort and you get out more than what you give it's by far one of the healthiest things in the world. I freaking love it. And you guys know this. I know this. Everyone knows this. You just got to get off your butt and do it. It's not easy to do. There's no doubt about it. Especially when it's hard, like, physically, when you just aren't accustomed to it and you feel sore afterward. But, man, it is... You just got to know in the back of your head, like, you're taking steps in the right direction. And each time you do it, you are getting closer to being even happier. I don't know. Uh, I think I said this before. I'll say it again. I think one of the things that speaks the most to me in life legitimately is the... Uh, also, I'll talk about this deck after. But um, the thing that speaks to me the most in life is if you try to make your life easy, you're making your life harder. What I mean by that is if you don't work out, if you don't do things that are challenging, if you don't put yourself in a position where you're trying hard in some aspects, the, the things that are good for you to do are often hard to do. 
And if you actually set out and do that, then your life will be easier as an outcome. But if you gain a lot of weight, really hard to, you know, function in society at the highest level at which you want to, right? Things just become harder because your energy levels will be lower. Maybe people um, will not be as nice to you. There's just like a whole bunch of different things that are just very real realities um, of like making sure that you, you try to, um, you know, put yourself in a position where uh, you're doing things that you might not like in the moment, but you know that they're going to give you good outcomes later on. And that's what I try to do or try to tell myself every single time I'm, I'm wondering what I'm supposed to do. Also, we lose this game. Really no way I can defend this. I do not like playing against Recruits Evolution. I think I've told you guys this before. Um, there's a lot of evolutions in Clash Royale that are extremely skillless and not good for the game. Royal Recruits is one of them that has topped the list for me. I think a lot of very bad players win with it as well. I do not think this guy is very good at the game. Especially by the fact that he doesn't realize that he might even lose his tower to the Firecracker. Alright, well, we are going to go to the next one and we will play better there. I don't necessarily think that your deck is well equipped to defend that. Um, <laughs> it's possible, right? Like, you can maybe use, like, a, uh, ooh. Man, you can still win this. Uh, Evo Recruits are really hard to defend if they just arrows away your Firecracker, for instance. Like, you don't have that much splash damage. I think I did optimal placements, but it's hard to tell because I wasn't paying super attention. The Sparky is good for us, though. Also mute him, because he doesn't seem like a very nice guy. We will lose, though. He'll just drop, like, uh, something in front of this. Nope. Something in front of this was accurate. Oh, man. There's really no ounce of brain power in your entire arsenal, my guy. Every single thing that you've dropped has been devoid of intelligence. It's just been spamming things at the river. All right. So... I think we can go in for like a firecracker here and then maybe a log. Probably gonna be an L, unless the firecracker is able to hit the, all the minions, which it doesn't happen. I have to Mega Knight here. Cannon will maybe be able to save our butt. I'm gonna fireball, so I'm not gonna try to protect that. Thank goodness that the Evo, um, sorry, not the Evo. Oh, how did that hit my tower, dude? That's crazy. Use fireball though, so. Thank goodness it locks onto the King Tower instead of anything else. This guy is actually really bad at the game. Like, I don't know what I was expecting, but he is really bad. Like, actually awful. We are gonna be, we are gonna be on the heck out of him for this. That was insane. How did he lose when he had like a hundred percent chance of winning? Like, actually, I do not understand. That was that was very well played, my guy. I don't say this very often, but the guy BM'd us the entire game with a good matchup, and then lost. Huh. I mean, sure, we have Electro Wizard for the Sparky, but if you just play Ray Recruits in the back and you spam Goblin Giant, you should be able to beat this deck. Most of the time. At least in my opinion. I, I think that that's probably the way that you play it. Pretty wild. Like, just to show you guys, like at the very start, he kind of just skillessly spammed all his stuff and then took a tower really early on. Like, we had our Electro Wizard out of cycle. I think I played this about as well as I could have. Not really change anything that I did. Like, good placement, Mega Knight on top of the Sparky. And then he just like recruits us and all ends. I dropped the little prince in the correct spot. It was like really good. I don't like uh, overcommit or anything. I dropped the ability, which is three elixir. Probably not like the best, but whatever. We dropped that into the sparky, which is an ideal. I guess the mini Pekka sacrifice was really bad, but the Evo recruits are just so annoying. He just spams laughter at us, thinking that he's won. Look at him, he's just like uh, laughing at us the entire time. Somehow loses his tower there. And then proceeds to lose the game. That's crazy. But yeah. I guess this this stuff also doesn't happen when I push up. Like when I am at uh, top like 1,000 or top 500 in the world. I, I don't beat people like this very often. Because <laughs> they're generally a bit better than these guys. So it's funny when uh, people like at lower skill levels BM a lot. Because they can actually lose. Even though they have the game completely won against us. Because they don't really know how to play the game at like the at an optimal level. Right? They'll make a lot of mistakes. Uh, I used your main deck. Oh yeah, I already saw that earlier. Um, I would not suggest Tesla. I think I rec uh, I said that earlier. Twin City, thank you for the five dollars. Uh, Toxic Hog Bait Deck, Hog Goblin Barrel Princess Minion Horde Log Zap and Fur Tower Skeleton Army. Yeah, I'll check it, man. I'll check it. We'll see if it's good. Um, so this deck, 
I don't like that you have Firecracker as the only arrow bait card in the deck. It's bad. It's just not smart to run Firecracker as the only arrow bait. If you have Skeleton's Fast Cycle, you can cycle multiple Firecrackers, and then it's acceptable, right? But you don't really have that capacity. You kind of have like a mixed mutt of like 2.6 Hog Rider and Mega Knight, and that doesn't work. So you really want to just switch to a Hog Rider Fast Cycle Firecracker deck, type in Sir Tag Hog Rider Cycle deck, or type in Sir Tag uh, Mega Knight Hog Rider deck, and then those will come up. And you got to pick one. You can't pick both. It just doesn't work. You can't have a cannon and a Mega Knight in the same deck. It's just kind of demented and not good. Um, so it's like a six or five for me. It's just uh, there's a lot of improvement, and I'd have to trash the entire deck to make something better than this. Um, you got to pick one or the other. It's not trashing the entire deck. It's like picking the first four cards or picking the bottom four cards. So it's like you build a deck with that core. Build a Mega Knight deck or you build a Hog Rider Cycle deck. And there's lots of examples. Just type in Sir Tag and then whichever one you want. All right, so let's check it out. Goblin Barrel, Hog Princess. All right, we want Princess in there. Princess is like a very underplayed card, but also it feels bad because she's she's a balanced card, right? You would want balanced cards to be played in this game more, right? <laughs> right, guys? You want cards that are unique, that are versatile, that allow you to like be getting damage across the river, die to log for a negative trade for the opponent, right? There's just like, it's cool because it has a weakness. It's very fragile and there's utility that you can get if you play it well. But Clash Royale, you buffed all these other cards that have the exact same thing that can shoot across the river, like a Firecracker Bomber. They cost less Elixir, and they don't die to arrows sometimes. <laughs> like the Firecracker, right? So it's like, I don't know, man. I feel like there's a lot of power creep in this game right now with evolutions that render other cards that are comparable completely useless. At least they're not useless, but they're just not as good. All right, we're missing Minion Horn. We don't have a single evolution in this deck, but I, I will humor you and run your deck. I will humor you and run your deck. There are no evolutions here. All right, let's run it. I think this deck is fine, but you would idealistically like Skeletons at Evo in there or Evo Bats. So I'd like replace one of the spells with Evo Bats for sure, instantly. And then Skeleton Army should be replaced by Evo Skeletons. All right, let's see if we can beat a top 300 player when we have no evolutions and level 14 cards. Should be a fun time. <laughs> uh, run it. I'm going to hog here. We're going to get ready with a zap or a log, depending on what happens. Bomb tower, so... Looking like it's going to be hog cycle firecracker evo from our opponent. In these type of matchups where your princess can't stack up because it's just going to get logged, what you do is you go princess of the river and try to get damage. If they drop skeletons, you zap them. We can activate King Tower with the Delayed Inferno Tower, and it also kills the Hog Rider. That was the best we could do with what we had. I don't know how he defended that. I actually don't remember what he did on defense, but he was able to stop a lot more damage than I thought after cycling the log. We Goblin Barreled Skeleton Army, and, I, and he had no Firecracker. I thought he lost the game. I actually still don't know what he did to defend that. But I thought for sure, like at least people at lower skill levels would lose there if they cycle log. Uh, unfortunately, this guy is not bad. He's top 300 player in the world or something. I think I probably am in a bad spot. If he clicks the ability, then it's definitely bad for me. We're going to log after the Hog Rider is about to get another hit, and we kill it. All right. There's so many other ones I can't wait to uh, read. Man, I just love... Also, like when I'm just sitting here in the chair, I always like moving around because apparently for posture and everything, you don't want to be staying stagnant in the same spot. So... Um, that's why, like, standing desks are so good, and that's why a lot of people, um, oh no. I think I just lose. No way he doesn't spell the Skeleton Army. Oh, I guess, well, there is a way. He drops an evil Firecracker and kills me that way. Yeah, so, if I'm being real with you, like, I, I don't want to be disingenuous, right? If I'm playing against someone at my skill level, which I think this guy is around my skill level, he's top 300, right? He might be better, he might be worse. Uh, don't know. But... Yeah, like, if I'm playing someone comparable to my skill, I, I'm not going to win if uh, they have Evo, two Evos and I have one. Or zero, actually. Yeah, if I have zero. <laughs> kind of bad. Kind of bad for me. So I can't give you a fair assessment on the deck. I mean, I can give you 
an extrapolated assessment on what I feel, but not necessarily a reality of like, hey, I'm testing your deck live and giving you a real feedback. Um, I, I, I would say like the deck definitely needs, uh, I mean, I wouldn't change anything if you are specifically not caring about evolutions um, and you will not have evolutions for a while, but I think everyone should upgrade their decks in preparation to have evolutions eventually. And if you've been playing the game, by now you should have at least one free evolution. There, like if you've been playing the game at all, at all and doing the free challenges and doing what I do, like if you guys are unaware, I will post videos on this YouTube channel every single time that there's a challenge on the content and I will help you guys. I want to help you guys. I want you guys to be able to unlock the new evolutions. I do that and I always will. Um, help you guys with the best decks for the new challenges. And uh, if you guys do those, you, you might be able to um, unlock evolutions a bit faster and at least get one or two. I don't know how this game was close even remotely. Um, I shouldn't have had a close game here. Yeah, good player. Kind of just beats us. There's not much you can do there. We had nothing for the uh, the, the Firecracker as well. So it's just like, you, you just kind of lose in that matchup. If you can't kill the Firecracker with like Zap plus Log, which is four Elixir, it's a negative one trade every time. Not good, not ideal. And then you can't Zap away Skeletons so they can go Skeletons Ice Spirit on your Hog Rider and it just looks awful. So yeah, I don't like the deck that much. Um, I think this is a bit outdated. You need to be running evolutions um, for this to work. Uh, because, or yeah, I think you need Evo Bats, honestly. Evo Bats are definitely better than Minion Horde. Can you check the Super Chat, please? I think I did see it, uh, Def. Thank you for the $2 again. Yo, Taylor, thank you for the $5, man. Goblin Giant Executioner? <laughs> Yo. I love that Taylor gives me like a smiley face and then the upside down smiley face and then a smiley face again, and then an upside down smiley face. Dude, I don't know why. I don't understand why I'm laughing about that, but uh, I like you, man. I like you. I like, I like your vibes. Sometimes the emote game or just like the texting game from people, it, it's fun, man. It's uh, you can tell if you if you vibe with people or not. All right, we're gonna go for. We'll go, go for a Goblin Giant here. We'll run his deck. Goblin Giant Executioner, Mini Pack of Fireball, Minions, Tornado. See if we can remember everything real quick. Like, guys, I'm speedrunning right now. We're not doing any mediocre. We're trying to test out the decks fast. The Tornado Fireball. Look how fast we're going. We're, we're, we're fast, boy. We're fast. I almost said it. I, I stopped. I stopped myself. If you know, you know. Um... Tombstone, Evil Wallbreakers, Minions. Les Mignons. Dude, French is such a beautiful language. Um, Like, honestly, if you are French, or if you can speak French, your attractiveness scale just goes up so high for like 90% of people. <laughs> if you're able to speak French. I, I, not if you're just French. But that's just like one of the... I think that language is just like so, so beautiful. All right, um... Mini Paga. All right, we're going to put Goblin Giant in the honorary spot of an evolution because it is a zero cycle evolution, so it's fair. This is, I, I rate this deck. I think, it, I think it works. I mean, I think it, like, it has two evolutions, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I need a pro's insight. Yeah, I got you, man. Hopefully, I'll be able to help you out. Wow, we're killing the game today. Also, if you guys are enjoying today's stream and you want me to do this more often, drop a like on the video. As I said before, when these videos reach a certain like goal compared to the other live streams, then I do it again. So the more frequently that you guys like this, the more frequently that I'll be able to do it. Um, if you want me to do more interactive things with the community, uh, the more often that these videos get liked. I monitor whichever ones, whatever streams perform the best, and those are the ones that I try to do more often. All right, so we're gonna try to activate King and we do successfully do that. If you are unaware, a cool interaction to know is Mini Pekka one-shots Barbarians, but it does not one-shot Evolve Barbarians. So against Evolve Barbarians, what you have to do is you have to go for a Rage or a Zap and then your Mini Pekka one-shots Barbarians. Preferably, you wanna use Rage and the reason why you would like to do Rage over the uh, over Zap is because obviously Rage is able in your Mini Pekka to attack faster and it allows you to one-shot the, the Barbarians, the Evolve Barbarians. So Goblin Giant... 
people, if you have mini pack in your deck, make sure that you are raging up the mini packa and hitting the barbarians. Um, pretty important. Also, I don't, I mean, I don't like executioner this deck, but I mean, it works. You have good defense now for air and it'll also allows you to have pretty nice offense as well, right? You're able to tornado opponent's units directly into the evolved wall breakers exploding on the tower. I think that'd be funny as heck. I kind of want to do that. I think I can mess with him a little bit and see if it works. Never caught a live stream before. I watch you every night. Hey, thanks, dude. I appreciate you being here. Let's go. Let's go. I watched Sir. T or I use Sir Tag's Minor Poison. Uh, so that's not very descriptive because I want to be real with you guys. A lot of the decks that I put up on my YouTube channel are the decks that are created by pro players. The reason why we do that is, well, obviously I want to make sure I showcase the best decks. There's a lot of decks that I don't create. I don't play them. Like I play them, obviously, because they're really strong. But I don't create the decks and I showcase in the intro the top player that plays the deck. I don't give credit to the person that creates the deck because everyone claims they created a deck. So it's impossible to know, but it is possible to know who the highest ranked player is. So I give credit and say, hey, this is the person that is playing the deck. Um, and I say that every single video. And uh, I just want to make sure that when you guys say that I am the person that created a deck, uh, I did not create a lot of the decks that I play. And I want to be transparent with that. I, I don't want to lie to you guys. I don't want to give you a misconception. I don't want to take credit when I don't deserve the credit. All right, we're going to go in for a tombstone here, and we should be able to defend that. I might be able to go through with wall breakers and then win the game. I think we just win. There's no way he's stopping this, I believe. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. We'll find out tonight. Wow, the goblin giant uh, kind of kind of cooked a little bit. Could have cooked a little bit more, but it's still cooked. I thought we were going to win. Uh, I should have fireball to be honest. I should have expected that. He really only has barbarians. I'm kind of stupid right now. I'm a little bit silly and stupid. A little bit silly and stupid, my guys. Slightly. Not a lot of it. Just a little bit. Terrible arrows. That didn't make sense. Made me value though. I appreciate. Oh, you know what? We can fireball on everything. I'm gonna drop barbs. 100%. 100p. 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 No? Wow, that was awful. <laughs> Guys, we're going to forget that ever existed, my dudes, all right? Oh, my goodness. How about we forget the existence of that interaction? Heesh. Yo, calm down with it, my guy. Calm down with it. You're not chill with it. You're trying to kill with it. He truly is. He's he's blazing through. He's He's a wild child. He really, wow, he's Blazer. I guess he is blazing through. It makes sense. Mini Pekka, why didn't you munch, bro? Why didn't you munch lax on him, bro? Come on, man. All right, we got we to gotta munch. We got to munch. It's not munching. It's not munching, my man. We are not munching. I had a hunch that we would munch, and it's not happening. Chill, Bill. All right, all right, all right. Stop. Stop, drop, and roll. My tower is taking a toll and we're dead. Also, I don't know if you guys can hear this, but out here in Seattle, we do be having those sirens blazing. They just knew that I was robbed from my towers. <laughs> fun game, fun game. Um, I don't think the deck's bad, but I don't think it's good. Um... It's obviously going to have weakness into arrows uh, because the minions are just going to keep dying. No one really wants arrows on evil wall breakers. They're just going to use their buildings. Um, you have a kind of a weak so source of direct damage, but it works. I mean, it's an okay deck. I'd say it's like a 7 out of 10. It's fine. It's not a terrible deck. It's just not phenomenal. Um, if I were to improve it, I'd probably swap out the tombstone and I'd try to make it a little bit more oriented towards offense uh but then if you don't have tombstone you're kind of screwed against evil wall breakers so it would take me a bit of thought process to think of a way to improve this one uh i think like well actually maybe not you know what i've lied to you here's how you improve it <laughs> someone's gonna call me out and just be like jake the way you improve every deck is just adding evo bats but let's be real for a second. Evo Bats have very strong synergy in this game with every other card that baits out arrows or zap. Obviously, they're broken then. So, yeah, I kind of like the bats here. 
Uh, I also would prefer to have Miner in this deck as well. Uh, just so that you have more comfortable capability of tanking for your wall breakers or bats. So what I would do is something along the lines of this, actually. And I would probably swap out who I can't really put out the tombstone. Can't really put out the NATO. The only thing that you can do is like this. And then you rely heavily on the executioner and the wall breakers from getting damage. Fireball is really nice because you don't have splash damage. But since you have executioner tornado, I think you're probably safe on defense. I would really try to run something like this, my guy. Hopefully that helps you out. And uh, good luck on ladder. I really, really hope uh, you push up. All right, Buried says, please play my deck, $20 dono. Thank you for that, my guy. That's insane. That is the biggest dono we got all day. And yeah, man, all the money goes back into the content. It allows my channel to be better. If you guys are unaware of the content that we create, we are all functioned by funding of the creator code. And also on top of that, the fact that you guys watch my sponsorships. The sponsorships have not been popping the past month or so, but you know, December I did way too many. So it's nice that it evens out a little bit. So I get to relax a lot more. <laughs> um, we are definitely making less money from the, uh, from, from that, from normal. But I also think the economy is not doing as well from that perspective, but yeah. Main thing is, uh, thank you guys for using the creator code. It allows me to put all that money back into the content and pay my editors a lot of money. So my editors are very happy. Um, they love their job. And some of them tell me like, hey, Jake, like this is the best job I've ever had. And they really appreciate like, you know, like your community, like the fact that you guys are able to fund more than most other creators because of the creator code. So yeah, guys, just want to say thank you to that. Um, not only are you making our content better, but you're changing my editors' lives. You're making them happier. So um, I guess that's another benefit of it. That all the money from the creator code goes back into them. Um, anyway, let's keep going. We do this. What else are we doing? Evo skeletons. All right, makes sense. Got it. Let's run it. Let's run it. Let's run it. And donations, um, by the way. But yeah, donations, creator code, and then um, what is it? Yeah, the, uh, the 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 sponsorships. All right. Well, the sponsorships also go back into, you know, other things. Uh, I don't know if you guys noticed. Screwed up my uh, camera really, really hard, like two streams or three streams ago. So I need to buy a new one um, because of like sponsorships with Samsung. We're able to get a really, really nice one. So I'm going to be upgrading and getting like one of the nicest cameras you can. You'll be able to see me and see all my acne, see all my pimples, see everything. <laughs> I don't know. Like the camera right now, I'll take a quick. You guys can see really quick. It's, it's slightly blurry because I had to put it on manual. Uh, but yeah, usually it's uh, usually it's a bit nicer. Usually it's a bit nicer than that. All right, so getting back to the deck, this guy did do donate twenty dollars, so I should give him a full assessment of the deck. I am sorry that I've been kind of not um, paying as much attention. But generally, the way that you play recruits, I'm sure you know, is you just spam them whenever you get the opportunity. They give you such immense value for their cost. When the opponent dual lane pressures you and you defend with Evo recruits, it's broken. They're a huge bailout. Also on offense, they're one of the hardest cards to counter. So the guy just lost like a princess and, and a bandit. That's six elixir. Then he had to drop a knight and another princess. He's down so much elixir. It's actually impressive. One of the ba uh, big difficulties that we're going to have in this matchup is our card levels are horrible. We have a lot of level 14 cards in this deck, including the musketeer, including the three musketeers. So not ideal. We're going to take damage. I didn't get the barbarrel down fast enough. Well, I guess I didn't even want to drop the barbarrel down fast enough. Maybe. Yikes. Evil wall breakers need a nerf. <laughs> It's it's kind of silly that they have the ability to do damage and also have two lives. I feel like they want Clash Royale really wants to make almost every card in the game noob friendly. Whereas I feel like there there shouldn't be as much of a training wheels to evolutions. They want every evolution to feel satisfying, in my opinion. It looks like they want every single evolution to guarantee value because then it's satisfying for the player. And if the evolution doesn't get value, then they're feeling like Wow, I guess like the noobs or the people that aren't so good with it aren't going to like evolutions. That's their concept behind it. It has to be, right? Um, so because of that, it changes the game in a pretty dramatic manner. Like evil wall breakers will always give them value. I don't think this is a good play on our end, but maybe we can stop one of them. We do. All right, we're going to bar build here and we're going to focus up for the rest of the game and see if we can uh, find a way through. We really, really want to focus. This knight does die to the musketeer, and then we can recruit to the river. Oh no. 
or nor. Or nor, my dudes. Not ideal. I have to go in for Skelly's Evo, probably. No, I think I'm okay. Okay. Did I do the deck correctly? Late to the party. I mean, the, uh, the the fundamental of the deck does make sense. Like, I understand what you're trying to do here. I just think that um, the main weakness of it is the fact that you are using Evo Skellies and you don't have like a good way of tanking for the Evo Skeletons at all points. Also, it does kind of hurt that my cards aren't leveled up. I'm sorry about that. But I do not like the deck that much. Can't fib about that. I think that Musketeer by itself is a pretty weak card. And one of the... Okay. I hate to be honest about it, but like I tell this to my friend that plays Three Musketeers all the time too. Um, three Musketeers right now, when you cycle nine Elixir, wouldn't you rather cycle three cards and cycle to an Evo Bomber instead of a Three Musketeers? The Three Musketeers are a range card. They impair your card cycle quite a bit. When you do that. Man, this guy is like not bad at the game. Kind of unfortunate. Keep cycling stuff. We can recruit again, maybe. Okay, thank goodness. We're gonna wait a little bit. Run it. Do this. This musketeer is like kind of bad. Just don't know what else to do. Nothing else really. Like, I'm just cycling cards into range cards that I can't kill. Like, if you have three small spells and you don't have a spell that can kill range cards, it's kind of depressing, to be honest. I understand why you have three small spells, but like, or like I understand like each of the spells kind of have its purpose. I don't love the, um, the, the, the delivery though, at all. Like, the delivery is really, really awful, I think, in this deck. So if I were to swap it a bit, like you have four Musketeers, I will play another game with your deck and I will swap it and I will make it better. Like, let's say your assumed core is like recruits and three Musketeers. That's okay. That's acceptable. That's permissible. But having that delivery, it just makes the deck super, super awful in the cycle. Say we want to do something like this. And instead of Barbro, we can do this. I think this will be better. Then we won't die to like all the dumb stuff that people have. Also, what if we had hogs in there, honestly, bro? Like, what if we just swap out your deck a little bit, brother? Brother man? What if we did this? Instead of four musketeers, you have three musketeers because the, f the fourth musketeer doesn't do much, man. It's not that big of a deal. Like, it's actually a card that I would not play. I, I don't really like regular Musketeer in, in the meta. I think it's a pretty weak card. I do like Rail Hog split with Recruits and also Evo Skeleton, so this might slap. Where are Hogs, though? Oh, there they are. Also remove this and put in a Little Prince, and that would give you a bit more defensive utility. So it could be Heal Spirit or Little Prince. I'm going to assume that you don't end up having Little Prince maxed out, um, and I'll just put in a Heal Spirit. Let's go. Let's try it. I think this could be fun. Um, this this might be a, a deliberately uh, devious deck, my guy. He says, I call it late to the party. The minions rage, uh, Barbril. I try to keep like the core components of the deck still there. The three Musketeers recruits. But I also try to give you a bit more of a avenue of killing firecrackers and princesses with the arrows. Just, if you look at the meta right now, it's just firecracker everywhere. Kind of what pro players and top level players are playing. You see my donation, no sweat? Yeah, no, I'll check it. Um, I will read every donation before I end the stream. I might not be able to use every one of your guys' decks, but I will be reading a lot of the donations. No recruits in the back. Also, we will be doing a lot of free to play ones as well. Um, we still have about another hour in the stream. As I said before, I kind of try to do three hours of these streams. Um, really want to give you guys bang for your buck for your time. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I do enjoy doing these streams a lot, too, so. Try to hit the three-hour mark every single time I do viewer requested deaths. At least that's the goal. To so watch the Evo Skeletons, I think they don't die. Oh, they do die! 
No way! Yo! Hey, yo! We got a uh, negative one trade killing uh, Evo Skeletons, and they actually died, imagine? Couldn't be me. <laughs> We're going to heal Spirit and then kill the uh, Firecracker and then have... That's like an intricate defense that a lot of people aren't able to do. Where you drop the minions directly on top of the Firecracker as fast as possible so you can kill the Firecracker. Wait, did we just... Did we finesse? Did we finesse? Yo! Let's go! That's light work. You're lighting up about... We're lighting up his tower. That is so sick. All right, this is not good, but it's... It's I. Right. If we can get recruits down and not get slaughtered by this stupid Evo Knight, we might be all right. All right, we're fine. We're chilling. It was really, really, really good. So, if we didn't have this version of the deck, we would lose 100%. 100p, my guy. But we're able to arrows here. Real hogs. He doesn't have firecracker. How is he? How is homie expecting to cook? Is he cook or is he shook? All right, we're going to heal spirit here, too. Winion, 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 winion. <gasps> winion! Oh, he forced out a log, maybe, kind of something, maybe, I don't know. Obviously, we're just going to keep up the pressure, just nothing else makes sense to do. I hate that so much, man. Watch. Rage, and it's still, like, so much value. Uh, the fact that firecrackers can be cycled at the river is disgusting, as I cycle all of my stuff at the river. <laughs> But mine makes sense. I kind of have to. If he doesn't log this, I'd be shook. He does. Shooketh. I mean, I think we do more damage on the right, to be honest. I had to cycle card I didn't. Expecting three Musketeers, uh, maybe? I mean, 3M here is like makes sense, but my cards are under leveled, so I'm not dropping 3M as much as I usually would. BH. I will right, we'll do royal recruits here. I love skeletons that no one ever. I can't defend this. I have to focus on that, and I'm not able to kill the hog in time. Even with raged minions, I knew it was over. So, yeah. I mean, that's kind of an unfor unfortunate situation. If we had three Musketeers leveled up, I would have actually won the game. So, I do think your deck is cool and all, and it's good. Um, but this version that I showed is a lot better. We would have won the game against the uh, the Princess player, for sure. It's just... It, it is hard to play against someone that has Evil Firecracker. It is just... It is not necessarily very easy. But it's an easier, it's a better matchup. Oh, sorry. I almost went into a game with another deck. deck. All right. Um, all right, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Oh, there's so many messages. Wow, you guys donated so much. I'm behind in the stream, but I might have missed it. I use your recruits deck, switch zappies for bomber, struggle with air. And I switch cage with Tesla. Yeah, I already responded. Um, I said that you can't. You really can't. You can't switch cage with Tesla because the cage gives you counter push. If you are struggling with air defense, then you should put in like bats Evo or like little prince plus like flying machine plus zappies and not use a building. And sometimes that will work, but I personally prefer to use buildings almost every time. You can swap out one of the small spells for an Evo bomber. Like maybe swap out, swap out Barbril for Evo bomber. And you can drop an Evo Bomber behind your tower, and it will actually full counter a Goblin Barrel, if you didn't know. It's a very cool interaction. If you drop it at the right point, like directly behind your tower. Kind of like you do with Bowler. Um, please try this deck if you get a chance. Evo Recruits, Little Prince, Evo Skeletons, Royal Hogs, Fly Machine, Fisherman, Arrows, Cannon. Thank you, Legends of the Beast. I will actually check that out right now. Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right. We got recruits. We got little prince. We end up uh, needing Evo Skellies. I just removed them. <laughs> you guys are a fan of your Evo Skellies, I guess. Makes sense. Makes sense. Real hogs, fly machine, fisherman, arrows, cannon. I again, I'm not a huge fan of running like buildings in this that aren't goblin cage. But I mean, to each their own. You're you're allowed to play your own deck. 
Um, I just don't like uh, I don't like buildings that aren't cannon or aren't uh, goblin cage. All right, fly machine, fisherman, and you also have fisherman. So I I actually don't even like your building. I would remove it. I would definitely, definitely, definitely put in a zappies in here instead. Like, I just I I really really dislike your building in there. And we only have arrows. Yeah, I mean this works, but my guy, you. you you really shouldn't have this cannon in there. The cannon's awful. It's a it's a wart on your deck, my guy. If if I could put in Zappies, the deck would be instantaneously better. Instantaneously better. I mean, maybe your cannon's in there just because you're sick of playing against evil wall breakers, but I don't like it. Unusual. Well, it's not very unusual to see a golem in the back all in. This is very common. I guess it's kind of unusual to see a firecracker with Golem. It's not very good. This deck is very bad on his end. But it is what it is. I'm not going to try to activate King or anything. I don't really care. I'm just going to arrows there. And then we'll cannon. Oops. It usually pulls against Electro Giants, but I guess not in this in instance. Fine, because I guess we're able to kill the uh, Electro Dragon, and then we win. Yeah, so not necessarily a good gameplay on our end. Um, I thought that would pull. <laughs> so one more tile left and we're fine, but whatever. Um, Elect Electro Giant gets pulled, but Golem doesn't get pulled in that instance. It's kind of crazy how, like, big tanks have different pull radiuses, and you have to memorize things. But Electro Giant gets pulled by that, and uh, Golem does not. So we did this against Golem, or Electro Giant. Doesn't work. For Golem, we want to be, like, there. This is the placement. We'll show you guys soon. Let's go, let's go! Alright, so we're just going to defend this and probably walk away with a win. This cannon does pull the golem. This is the farthest we can pull, I believe. These bats are potentially a problem, so we're just going to air on it immediately. With the ability. Uh, I am not a fan of playing in people that do this, but the good thing is our little prince doesn't have to reset. Wait, he actually screwed himself! Wait, 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 wait. Guys. Think about it from this perspective. The Little Prince, when it moves, it resets its attack because it has to recalibrate its machine gun, right? But the attack speed ramps up the more attacks it gets. <laughs> the fact that he moved it closer to his units means that my Little Prince doesn't have to reset its attack because it didn't have to move. He moved it for me. So he lost his Night Witch so much faster than he would have if he hadn't done a dumb tornado. That makes me very happy. Honestly, that is that is a good moment. I'm not gonna feel by I am an enjoyer. Okay, he actually misclicked really hard. Click the ability, knock it back twice, light work. Fly machine here, Evo Skeletons on the firecracker. Noxious card dies, we're in a great spot though. Beautiful baby. Go Royal Hogs. If you drop your Royal Hogs there in that spot, then you're able to get all of them go towards the Princess Tower on the left hand side without any of them going towards the King Tower. If you drop it in a different spot, they will go towards the King Tower. He doesn't have enough. It doesn't do enough. Lightning. Oh, no, it does, I guess. At max ladder, level 15, it does. At level 14, it doesn't. But it doesn't matter. We can still go in for a Royal Hogs. And our pockets are getting fatter. These piggies are pigging out right now. And he's going to get out of this game. I believe that we can fly. I believe we can touch the sky. That's what the fly machine says every time it gets damaged, right? Um, you heard it here first. You heard it here first. All right, we're going to fly machine, and we'll go for skeletons, and we'll just run it back. Uh, go for another royal hogs. Gonna pull the golem, because why not? I don't think that we're in a bad spot. I think we're in a pretty good position, my dude. G French? Oh, yeah, dude. French is a beautiful language. Monsieur Tag. <laughs> Como ça va? I love you try uh Jake I love you try my deck and see how you make it better wow I mean if you say you love me my guy this is a free to play Z I will do it you did not donate I but you said you love me you said you love me my guy if you're professing your love I didn't know that we were at that stage of our relationship my dude you know we just met we just talked for the first time it was my first message ever reading from you but you love me and I love you <laughs> it was love at first text all right, we're gonna use giant skeleton, witch hog, rider minions, skeleton army. Oh, Valkyrie balloon. Oh my goodness, spicy, 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 spicy. I don't know if I love your deck, but also this deck. 
Uh, if you put in Zappies over Cannon, probably a solid... I don't know. Or you could, you could go Goblin Cage and then Zappies instead of the Fisherman. And that works. Or you could go Zappies instead of the Cannon. Those are my changes. Your deck as is is a 7. Would be an 8.5 if you made the change. Because Recruits and Evo Skeletons are broken. And all the other cards in your deck are really good. They're easy to play. And they're fun. This would be the best deck that anyone suggested today. Over Well, the Royal Giant deck was the best one so far. But uh, I made adjustments. Too. Um, this would be the best deck so far, I think. Probably. I mean, maybe it's 7.5. I, I think this is the best deck that someone's recommended so far out of all the ones that I've tried. But it still could be improved. Like, you need to have Zappies or you need to be running um, Goblin Cage. The deck is, optim is not optimal as is. So Legends of the Beast with the $7 dono, you had the best deck so far, my guy. Thank you. That wasn't like a deck copied off of a pro player. Like, this is a deck that he created. I mean, it's still, like, close to pro, but, like, having Evo Skeletons and Evo, uh, Evo Recruits is a pretty good strategy that I hadn't done before. Or I haven't done it yet. Uh, <laughs> All right, so... Where is it? Oh, man, I, I'm almost... I'm trying to find where... Uh, Okay, I found it. I found it. I, I, I literally lost sight of the guy that said he loved me. I, we'd have been stranded at an airport. It would have been love at first text, and we would have never seen each other again, man. It would have been tragic. <laughs> it would have been so funny if I hyped him up so much I didn't use his deck because I couldn't find it. There's like a sea of people flooding in, obfuscating our, view, our viewpoint. All right, we're going to run the log, and once well, Valkyrie Balloon. Dude, am I really... Am I... Am I actually running one evolution? It's only going to be the Evo Valkyrie. My guy, I, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can get behind my love, your, our love today, man. I don't. I don't know. I feel like if you're not spoiling me and you're giving me a Valkyrie, it's uh, it's not working. I'm a gold digger, my dude. I need two evolutions. All right, so we need Hawk Rider Balloon. <laughs> I ask for two evolutions. He gives me two win conditions. This is just like um boyfriend duty or partner duty failed you know it just like does it isn't that pretty funny i don't know if you guys have ever um if y'all have been in relationships where you like ask for something and they give like a very scuffed version of it and you're like oh thanks and it, it's kind of fun it's kind of funny i've also done that like sometimes uh all right i didn't know what boba was really before um so i thought like the boba was really good but it was really awful and I gave it to the person I was with at the time. And they're just like sitting there drinking the boba. And they're like, this is great, Jake. Thank you. <laughs> but you just knew that you failed boyfriend duty when that happened. And you're like, oh, that's, that's not it. <laughs> it's not it. You just, you just failed a mission. You failed a mission. Not ideal. Uh, that has only happened with boba. I did not know what boba was. I feel like that can happen in other degrees too. Hopefully I don't have that same experience again. Anyway, um, we've got Giant Skeleton and Witch. And it's not even Halloween. This deck is definitely cooking something up. I just don't know what it is. Jake, you'll probably never see this, but always keep going and never give up. You're so goat. Thank you for everything. Please try this. Wallbreaker's Mighty Miner. That's Goblins, Firecracker, and Bomb Tower. I've played decks like that before. It's very good. Um, I don't really want to play Bomb Tower, Mighty Miner because that is a deck that I played for like a century. Um, yeah. Mighty Miner is not a very good card right now. It needs a buff. I would buff Evo, um, Evo Ice Spirit, Evo Valkyrie, uh, Electro Wizard. Definitely would buff Mighty Miner as well. It's just it's a hardcore deserves buffs. You guys should not be playing Electro Wizard. I'm telling you right now, if you're trying to scale into the higher stages of Clash Royale with your skill level, Electro Wizard needs a buff for it to be played. No player at a higher level plays it. Zero. Zero. Or isn't a single deck in the top 200 that successfully implements Electro Wizard that isn't like, oh man, I have this card upgraded and I need to keep playing it because I don't want to spend money on other cards. Or I don't have an evolution or another card that like replaces it. Every other card, like Little Prince, Dark Goblin even, freaking like, I don't know, uh, Archers that are evolved, like the, the Archer Queen, like they all outrank the, uh, yeah, they all outrank that really, really hard. I just would not advise playing it. The Electro Wizard is way worse than that. I pull everything back. I mean, one of them is going to lock tower. It's fine. We're going to be able to slaughter it with minions, I believe. Maybe not, though. 
mess around and find out, right? All right, which do your thing. Not like that. That's not the thing that we're looking for. <laughs> nice skeleton in the back because that's the side he's likely to go in. So we just want to protect that tower. Uh, skeleton army could be a good play because that's out of cycle, but it's going to be hard for us to do anything. Go evil Valkyrie. Go minions. Hog Rider. We have nothing really left, but it's fine. I think we're kind of going in the right. Maybe these minions. The bomb explode on the bats. Nice. Yeah, Valkyrie, you don't suck that hard. Let's go. <laughs> She's awful, but she did something. All right, we're going to go hog and we're going to balloon. Balloon rider. <laughs> there ain't no way this does anything, right? He's just going to bats it. Kind of sad, not going to lie. <laughs> I was hoping the balloon rider would do something. But uh, the balloon rider just baited out evil bats that hurt me more. What can I say? Not ideal. Alright, so he's going to poison. We're really just going to shove every win condition that we can. And it's going to be a winter wonderland of win conditions. It's not going to work because it's just going to go into bats. And we just have no way of killing that. You seriously cannot run a balloon deck that does not have an anti-air answer. Like, legitimately, if you are running a balloon deck that has no way of killing bats, your deck will lose every time. I'm sorry, my guy. This is uh, this has got to be like a 4 out of 10 for me. It's just there's really no way to win in a lot of situations, unfortunately. We just lose the poison. Even though we have the hog rider and everything on the tower, we just lose. That's such a sad loss, too. Because, like, we played better than him almost the entire match. And we almost won. But we weren't able to win. Crazy. But yeah. If, if you don't have a way of killing bats in your deck, and you cannot say witch or minions. If you say witch or minions, then you're, like, not going to get better at Clash Royale because you don't understand the concept of, like, people will body block the witch or the minions from locking onto the bats. Doesn't work. Giant Skeleton Bomb, it explodes, but it takes forever, and it's a bad trade. You don't want a Giant Skeleton to kill bats. So, pretty much impossible to win that. Um, your deck needs arrows for sure. Like, if I were to do anything, if you want to keep the same creation, you got to do this. The log just can't be in the deck, man. Or a Zap, or a Snowball, like anything. You just, or even a Rage, man. Like, you just, you cannot have, you cannot have log in that deck. I would have won the game if I had Rage, by the way, or any of those spells. Um, but I don't really love the concept of Witch. Um, if you wanted to run something like at a higher end, like an elevated version of this experience, maybe like this. And then, yeah, I mean, that might work. I think this is probably the best I could give you. I don't really like the Witch, um, but this, this might work, maybe. Uh, Evo Valkyrie pulling units back if Evo Valkyrie gets a buff. Um, you could run you could run this. I, I think this might work. If they go Goblin Barrel, you just Skeleton Army behind your tower and it kills the Goblin Barrel. Or you Archers in front and the Archers do decent. Or you go Valkyrie and it kills two of the Goblins if you drop at the right spot. That's what I would recommend. Hopefully that helps you. I do like the fact that you at least had win conditions. I don't like the fact that you picked uh, subpar evolution of Evo Valkyrie into a two Evo deck with Evo Knight and Evo Bats, two of the best evolutions, and we had no answer to the Bats. That is, that is why we lost that one. Um, it was so close, though. It was so close. All right. I'm going to go back to the uh, pay-to-win ones. So, Devin, thank you for the uh, dono. And Suvit, thank you so much for subscribing and being a part of the memberships. Really appreciate that, man. Evo RG, Evo Skellies. Oh, my gosh. What is this deck? So, this is spicy. This is something I can get behind. I like this. My man has crafted a spicy cook. And our opponents better be shook. All right, so we want uh, Sparky in there. We want Goblins. We want Minion Horde. Log Arrow Prince. <laughs> Dude, I love how he spelled Arrow Prince. He's like Log Arrow. But like without the extra R. It was just pretty funny. I don't know. 
It was like it was all jumbled together. It was all very jumbled together. My man like typed it in two seconds. I love it. I love how like he was like, yeah, you know what, Jake? You're gonna understand it. You will. You'll get me. You'll feel me. And we got a prince in there too, somehow. Alright, so this is not a bad deck from the looks of things. Cursory glance, like I think this will be fun. I don't think it's bad. Um, I think Prince kind of needs maybe to be changed for a mini P.E.K.K.A. But you don't have Rage, so... Eh, I would probably remove the, the log and put in a Rage and put in a mini P.E.K.K.A. I would just do that. That would be my change immediately. We'll see how it works, though. Do you like the name Jake? Yeah, I really like my name. Um, my actual name is not Jake, by the way. It's Jacob. I do not like it. That is why I uh, <laughs> changed my name to Jake. It's just better that way. All right, all right. We can Sparky in the back, maybe. We can figure things out. We do be figuring things out. Generally, with Sparky decks, if they cycle a four or card, you Sparky into it, you kill it, and you look at yourself, and you're like, hey, I did things. The other thing that's kind of funny is when you drop a Royal Giant at the river, and they drop things on top of it, and the Sparky blasts those units. I do like that. I do enjoy. The reason why Royal Giant isn't played as much with um, Sparky as Goblin Giant or Regular Giant is the Royal Giant's health for its elixir cost is not as high. So you're spending more money, more elixir, and you're not getting as much of a tank. You might think, oh, this makes a lot of sense. The synergy is strong, but it's worse objectively than a Goblin Giant or a Regular Giant because really you want to like power through with your Sparky and uh, you can't necessarily do that as effectively. Let's keep going. Let's keep vibing. There's so many more donos that I will be reading as we keep going. I'll keep... I'm going to not be able to play all the donation messages, so I will start to read them as we play. I think while we play Sparky is probably a good time to do that just because, hey, easier deck to play. <laughs> Victor, thank you for becoming a member. Rohan, uh, can you try my deck? Dude, there's one of my friends uh, in Seattle's name, Rohan. He's a really chill guy. So I like your name, man. I already like your name without even knowing you. You try your de my deck. Night Witch, Valk, Minions, Log, Ram Rider, Princess, Goblin Bro. I suck, please help. Uh, yeah, so the issue with your deck, my guy, is if you're running something with Ram Rider and Goblin Bro and Princess, your deck's synergy isn't strong. You're running something that has Log Bait, and you're also running something that has, like, a, you know, fully aggressive Bridge Bam deck. So with Ram Rider, you want to be running Mega Knight or Pekka or Elite Barbarians. Um, and with Goblin Barrel, you want to be running bait cards like, you know, Goblin Gang, Princess, Dark Goblin. So you, you kind of have the wrong mixture. I would type in Sir Tag, Log Bait, or Sir Tag, Ram Rider. And one of those decks that you guys, that you see that pops up, I would really, really recommend playing those. It would take too long for me to completely change your deck because there's two opposing dynamics there. And it's not really going to have good synergy and it's not going to work out. That's what I would recommend, my man. Hopefully that helps you out. Also, again, I like your name. <laughs> okay, so going back to business here. We are standing on business. We have a really good spot, I think. I like this spot a lot. We want to cycle multiple Royal Giants if we want to win this, though. Do I do this? He just uses Log, which is, I, I think, a mistake. We're going to try to do split lane pressure since we have the Evo Skeletons. Cycling them on the same side is bad. Unless we're somehow able to break through and log on his. Uh, arrows? Wait, this is bad arrows. What am I doing? Oops. Okay, we're kind of winning now with the Prince on the tower. That's huge. That's really, really good. And then, because, you know, we're not going to get greedy and randomly spam at the river when we're up. What do we do? We just defend. We're like, oh, we're in a really good spot. Let's get further and further ahead. Let's make him freak out and make all the misplays. Let's make him spend all the elixir that he shouldn't be. That's what I like to do. He actually got a lot of damage there, surprisingly. Well played. Uses Evo Ice Spirits. It's the lane push a little bit. Fine. This Royal Giant locks onto the tower. I'm very happy. Evo Skeletons are such a bailout, though. They really need a nerf. Like, significant nerf. Uh, out of all the cards in Clash Royale, again, I just... I hate the fact that they're this strong. Appalling. We do have an RG here, and we do have Arrow's Log, so I think I'm an okay spot, but can't guarantee anything, you know? I think I might lose. 
We did get that last shot, though, so we might win. Gonna come down to the wire. We win. Awesome. GG! So, I like the deck. Uh, beating 2.6 is always a good, like, semblance of the strength of the deck. You can run it as is. Um, I think having Mini P.E.K.K.A. gives you a better answer to Hog Rider, better answer to Ram Rider, better answer to Bridge Bam. It's cheaper, and having Rage allows you to really power through with the Royal Giant. So, you can knock back their units, so then they can't kill your Royal Giant. So, you have the double effectiveness of knocking things away from your RG that's evolved, and multiplying your skeletons faster, and... Also, on top of that, your Sparky shoots faster. So having no Rage in this deck feels kind of like you're scamming yourself. So I would really remove uh, the Log, put in a Rage, and remove the Prince for a Mini P.E.K.K.A. And the deck will be significantly better. This is possibly the best deck of the day, actually, now. I think it's better than Recruits. This is a really cool concept, and it works by itself. Having Log Arrows, that's a good concept. The Prince makes sense. You don't have Rage. But it could be optimized to be slightly better. Hopefully that helps you out. And uh, yeah, great deck. Thank you for it. Very fun, again, to run Evo Skeletons with a deck that where you have Prince and you have Log Bait because you've got Goblins. Like, this is a very well thought out and good Sparky deck that I've never seen before. So this is... This tells me that you're probably Ultimate Champion. I don't know what rank you are, but you're probably semi-high on Ultimate Champion. At least that's what I assume. Because uh, this this really did have some good thought process in it. And um, it's creative. So, well played, man. Uh, mid ladder Demon. Evo Bomber, Wizard, Firecracker, Normal, Inferno Dragon, Ram Rider, Mega Knight, Zap, E Wiz, Might Exchange, uh, Evo Recruits for Evo Bomber. Uh, no, you want Evo Bomber in this. Evo Wizard, I mean, Wizard, Wizard just sucks, man. Wizard is like a D tier card. It's bottom of the barrel. I wouldn't use it. I wouldn't use it. Um, five Elixir for. A range card that doesn't like you know annihilate an entire tower <laughs> couldn't be me man you have a stark dichotomy though so maybe you uh maybe you feel bad for the opponents when you're running evil bomber you're like you know what i feel a little bit bad for my opponents um yeah i am gonna run the evo uh because i want to run the most optimal version of the deck whenever i'm playing it if it does have an evo i will be playing it for these uh challenges to assess its optimum like its maximum strength if your deck does have evos i will be playing them um, especially if I have underleveled cards like a level 14 Ram Rider, right? So it just evens things out a little bit more. It's not really even because it's a level 14 card and my opponents will have level 15 and two evolutions, but, you know, it makes it a little bit more fair instead of deliberately putting myself at a disadvantage. All right, uh, let's do the Mega Knight here. And then let's also do Zap Ewiz. Yeah, Zap Ewiz. You guys got to stop putting Ewiz in your deck, though. I understand that it's a nice reset and it feels good, but you have to look at the value that you're getting from the card and you have to see what you're passing up on. Because there's always an opportunity cost of putting in a card in your deck. This card is decent defensively, but it's awful. It's atrocious. It's never going to give you value on offense. Unless it's paired with a miner, and then the opponent doesn't have Elixir to stop the miner, and the Electrozer just keeps resetting the tower. But if they're down for Elixir, then that's their problem. They would have lost to a Hog Rider. They would have lost to any other card, too. It's, it's pretty bad. You know? All right. Um, Mad Dog, thank you for the dollar dono. And then... Um, yeah, thank you again, Legends of the Beast. I appreciate that. You hate my deck, but one with it. LOL, peace, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, like a, it's a pretty common thing. I dislike... um Like, when I win with decks or lose with decks, um, I, I try to assess them fairly based off of, like, an assortment of things that can happen. Not just, like, did I win or lose with a deck in that one game? I want to, like, holistically evaluate the deck because there's a much larger sample size of one. There's a reason that... Data, data, whatever you want to call it, is is not really extrapolated off of a sample size of one because it's very like unreliable, right? I try to be honest. I because I, I play this game a lot, I can understand what will happen um, if you play into certain decks because I've played every card in the game and I've played a lot of Clash Royale. Because of that, I can tell you what is likely to fail in certain points on certain things. Oh, this is a really crazy game. All right, we're going to go in for a Ram Rider here and disincentivize him from activating King Tower. And if he drops a Billy in the middle, it might even hit the tower. I'm just going to zap. Oh, I messed it up. That was really bad. Oops. Wait, he's got Inferno Dragon Graveyard. So this matchup is not great because if you look at our deck, we only have Bomber to counter the Graveyard Skeletons. So um, this matchup is actually really hard. But it's okay. 
We're going to go for like an Inferno Dragon and Mega Knight at the river and probably sack this tower, possibly. I think that's the best way of playing. Like using the Mega Knight to jump on the Archer and then hopefully jump on the tower. It's kind of like a Bandit jump almost. I think it's fine. Pretty smart. Now it's just going to immediately start jumping maybe. Okay, the Electro Wizard probably has to reset, but it can't. This is like the most optimistic Electro, Electro Wizard I've ever had in my life. I said Electro Wizard, right? Electro Wizard. Licky Tongue. All right, Electro Wizard, can you do something? Thank you. Appreciate it. Love you. All right, we can activate King Tower with this Evil Bomber. The Wizard in the back expecting him to do something. Very cool. Like Mega Knight here. Wizard's just going to die, but it's fine. Like, I didn't expect anything from this card. I just had to cycle it. It's like, as you can see, it's just not a good card. It just really isn't. Feels awful. Alright, does he even get the ability down? I guess not. Do I just lose? Honestly. This is painful. <laughs> this is so painful. Oh man. Yeah, if you had Knight or something that I could block that, it would be so cool. Yeah, this deck is not it. You gotta remove the wizard. Um, if you're looking for a good, like, Mega Knight deck right now, um, you kind of have to make it a bit better structured because Mega Knight is a really weak card for its elixir cost, uh, and it can get kited and distracted and you're not able to defend very well. So, like, what I would do if I wanted to run a hot, like, a, a deck like this, I would definitely run Evo Knight, 100%. And then you have the same issue where you have two ranged cards that are just predictably like able to get countered at the river because you have two of them so you're just going to spam them at the river at every twist and turn they get countered and then you spend elixir it's just like not that great you rather build up big pushes with the mega knight and then if you get the opportunity then you go for the bowler or the uh the bomber to get the damage you just don't randomly spam the bomber and the firecracker at the river at every point it's just not how you should play clash i mean the bomber yes spam at the river at every point but like you shouldn't spam both of them it's just too much of a commitment unless you're running a super fast cycle deck with like delivery and a quick card cycle where you can defend against everything I would do something like this and remove the firecracker. You can keep the e if you really wanted, but it's just better to do this. Like if you're at a higher level of gameplay, uh, Little Prince actually can defend against Graveyard because it ramps up his attack speed. So it just starts killing all the skeletons really quickly. This is nice. And then I would remove this. Electric Spirit works for like countering bats and stuff if you wanted. Also, another like small reset mechanism. Um, trying to think of like what else is good. Probably, honestly, I just put in a bandit or a royal ghost. The issue with these type of decks, when you're running Mega Knight with Ram Rider, it is an extremely expensive deck in Clash Royale. Like, it's not just expensive like from a standpoint of oh the high cost of the cards, the literal like cost of money that you have to put into the game to obtain like a fully functioning Ram Rider deck with Mega Knight. It just costs a lot. Like, it's it, it just super costs. So I would recommend playing something with, like, Hog Rider, maybe. Hog Rider Lightning. Uh, that works pretty well with Mega Knight instead of Ram Rider. This is, like, an optimal. You could run this. with. You could put in a Lightning instead of, like, the Inferno Dragon if you wanted. Or a Lightning instead of... No, I'd just keep it as this. I wouldn't change anything, actually. Do you want to have ways of killing tanks? But if you wanted to, you could put in a Fireball or a Lightning instead of the Bandit, maybe. Yeah, that's what I would do. Um, or remove the Hog Rider, or remove the Ram Rider, put in a Lightning, and then, for the Bandit, and then put a Hog Rider instead of the Ram Rider. And then it's, like, more free-to-play friendly, maybe. That's what I recommend. You could put a Royal Ghost or a Dark Prince instead of the Knight if you don't have the Knight Evo, or you could remove the Bomber and put in a Firecracker, regular Firecracker, or Evo Firecracker. There's like, a lot of substitutions that you could do, but the deck that you played with Wizard is just untenable. It does not work. Um, like, it's like a 5 or a 4, just because the Wizard just sucks that much. It really exasperates the weakness of the, the deck when you have a card that just can't hold its weight. Like the card is just dead. It doesn't give me value ever. Unless I'm playing against a minion horde or something. 
Um, wizard works in very finite situations where you're trying to use it in a niche spot where it can kill minions or something that will kill your goblin giant Sparky, where your Sparky already has enough firepower. But in that deck, it just you, it just doesn't do anything. People don't realize that Eagleum is actually a seven elixir card and not a three elixir one. It's a bad loan unless you can make major damage before it dies as Lord Grim. That is a fantastic way of saying that. Thank you, Lord Grim. So yeah, again, I'm going to just repeat it. He said that Elixir Golem is a seven Elixir card and not three Elixir because you're donating four Elixir to the opponent. Because of that, it's kind of a bad loan. And the reason why it's bad is, think about it. Like, are you cycling a seven Elixir? Would you rather have an Elixir Golem or would you have an Electro Giant? Electro Giant costs seven Elixir too, guys. But the difference between Elixir Golem is you're able to spend it earlier, punish the opponent when they're at less Elixir because it costs three Elixir. The stats are way worse than Electro Giant, though. So it is a bad loan. Perfect comparison, Lord Grimm. I love you. Thank you for that. All right. Uh, Omega Suck says, Evo Mortar, E Giant Bowler, Little Prince. Uh, yeah, I'll check it. I'll check it. All right. We, we're just going to play E Giant because we have not played it yet today. Um, and it looks like we got 35 minutes left. So we're just going to try to power through all these uh, donations. And I'm not going to be able to play all of them. I do really want to read them though. Um, so after this Electro Giant one, I'm going to read all the donations. I won't be playing all of them. I'll, I'll come back to the donations afterward, maybe, if there is anything super spicy. Generally, the people that come in the stream earlier and donate earlier all have their game, all have their decks played. The earliest people that donate always have their decks played. Um, by the way, <laughs> not not every single person, but usually it increases your chances because towards the end it's like, oh man, I'm going to want to give more free-to-play people the chance. Um, tornado Fireball. But I do read every single message. I'm not leaving the stream without reading all of your guys' messages. I promise that. Because there are people that donate that don't actually want their deck played, and it'd be irresponsible for me to, you know, take money and just be like, hey guys, I'm not going to read your message. That's just really bad. I think some people do that, but I, I try not to. Definitely have done that before because I've been a bad streamer, just like, not reading chat, and I feel awful when that happens. Um, all right, we are missing one card. Bowler, Little Prince, E-Giant, Baby Dragon, Tornado, Barbrill, Fireball. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. Would you recommend a seven second Evo? So you want me to put in the Evo. That means like I can't uh like I literally can't like I can't rate your deck and give you like a fair rating um because you're asking me to put in a card. So if you want me to put in a card, I would put in a knight. Uh knight is really, really good because it allows you to tank for the electro giant. So the electro giant can get on top of the tower. That's what I would recommend. And we'll play it. We'll play one game with it. I see your videos every day at my work while eating, says Ravi. Thank you for the $2 dono. And uh, yeah, I'm glad to have that happen. A lot of you guys that watch my content whenever you're eating, it's a power play. That's when I watch my YouTube videos as well. Like uh, whenever I'm reviewing videos for, for my content or I'm watching videos with my friends just to chill, um, it's always what I'm eating. That's generally what I do. Hey, Mr. Tag, how's your day going? Um, what flying evil would you like to see? A flying machine because I love my Royal Recruit stacks. <laughs> flying machine would be so obnoxious. Imagine, I feel like it will have multiple lives. It will like hit a firecracker shot that like splashes. Oh man, it's gonna be dumb. I, I want I want Flying Machine to get involved because of my decks. Um, if you're asking me like my specific decks, greedily, what do you want for your chances of becoming better at Clash Royale? Like my win rate will go up higher if I can play a Flying Machine in my Royal Recruit stack. So I like that. <laughs> Evo Firecracker, Meg. So that's like Mega Knight Firecracker. We played against. The, we played a lot of that earlier. I'm not going to be doing that one today, Brian. Sparky, Prince, Skeleton Army, Skelly, and Bomb Tower. Wait, Skelly Barrel and T. What's T? I don't even know what that is. But I do like having Skeleton Barrel with Prince and uh, Sparky. I have played decks like that before. It is a good deck. Like it's, it's not bad. Also, Chris, thank you for the five dollars. I I call this. Um, okay, I'm not focused. I, I'll read these donations after because I am kind of throwing a little bit. Um, generally, Electric Giant works a lot better in Double Elixir, so Single Elixir, you're not going to really be able to break through often. 
but we're doing it anyway. We're going to try to hold his uh, knight in place so it locks onto other stuff, so maybe we can still find a way through. If this Electro Giant locks onto the tower, despite it not being very healthy, it will do a lot of damage. Like a ton. A metric ton of damage. Look at that. Look at how much damage I'm getting. So if you can MacGyver your way through, that's what you want to do. Also, another strategy is... Okay, we're just going to use our bowler here. Another strategy that I was going to say is you want to use your bowler in conjunction with your Electro Giant. And what that does is it allows you to tornado units that they try to defend with right into the Electro Giant or uh, towards their tower. And both situations you get value. You probably have to tornado and barbell to kill the wall breakers. Hopefully not, though. Also, go Little Prince here. It should be able to pull the knight. I could tornado on that. I should have tried to tornado a lot earlier, but I really wasn't paying that much attention. The bomb tower is obnoxious, by the way. I think I've already said that, though. We're just going to fireball on in every chance we get. Or try to bowler, like, just to kill that. And then Electro Giant immediately. Maybe he's not back to bomb tower. We'll have to wait and see. Nah, he isn't. Perfect. Let's go. We win. Perfect. Not perfect gameplay at the start, but I focused up a little bit at the end. And as you guys can see, if you play decently with Electro Giant, you'll probably win a lot of your games at lower levels. Um, I don't think I'll lose many games if I play this Electro Giant deck over and over again at the skill level um, until I reach like top 2000. Uh, it's a very, very common deck to be able to steamroll like just mid ladder players. Anyone to like top 2000 or 1000 doesn't really know how to defend against Electro Giant that well. So if you use Bowler Tornado with Electro Giant, either your Electro Giant is going to be able to kill their units or you use the Bowler, it hits their units and hits their tower. So very strong and slimy strategy that I would not recommend to do if you don't want to, uh, you know, annoy everyone that you're playing against. It just annoys everyone. Also, Chris says, RD Hog Ball, Firecracker, Hog, Knight, Royal Delivery, Skeletons, Cannon, Fireball, Log. I've played against that a lot. I've used that a lot. It's strong. I, I like Earthquake way more than Fireball, so I'd remove Fireball, put in the Earthquake. But Fireball works at lower skill levels. Once you reach higher ranks, you're going to want to be able to break through buildings every time. And Earthquake's the only way to do that. Um, NR ROM, $25 dono. So I will actually play your deck because you not only donated a lot, but you are running my favorite card. Wow. My man is a sweet talker. He, <laughs> he is the only person out of everyone today that is using my favorite evolution. And if you guessed what it is, it is the Evo Mortar. I love the goblins coming out of that mortar. It is OP. It's actually not that great, unfortunately. But it is by far the most satisfying card in the game. When the goblins pop up and pop onto the tower, it is so fun, man. I freaking love it. You got me smiling. You got me lit up. Uh, more than two ways, man. You gave me the happiness from the dono and also that. So, a fun deck. I'm just glad that you didn't donate like $100 saying, run all spells. Because sometimes people do that. And uh, yeah, thank you for, you know, being lenient with your with your big dono. And doing a uh, a nice deck for me. Alright, so you got Goblin Gang and Mega Knight. I don't really like the Mega Knight in there. But I mean, I can, I can get behind it. It works. It, it does things. It jumps. Uh, Dark Goblin, Inferno Dragon, Zap, Skeleton Barrel. Honestly, I, I think the deck might work pretty well. The bad thing about uh, the Evolved Mortar right now in the meta is Evo Bomber can lock onto it. So if you don't have arrows in your deck, you're putting yourself at a very big disadvantage. So immediately, I have to tell you, honestly, you need arrows. The Zap is not a tenable card to be holding its place in the deck. It doesn't work. You need to remove that. Um... 100%. But it is what it is. Uh, that's just one card. That's the only thing that I've really identified. Inferno Dragon, it doesn't really make that much sense. I don't like it in Mortar decks. It's too slow, clunky, and you need... I don't know. Your card cycle might be kind of screwed up. Like you have... All right, let's just... Let's put you in this environment, all right? Imagine for a second that you have this hand. You got your, your Zap, your Mortar, your Skeleton Barrel... And your Inferno Dragon and Dark Goblin. So sorry, you have this. Like Inferno Dragon, Skeleton Barrel, Dark Goblin, and if someone drops a Bandit. Actually, screw it. Let's say you have any of these situations. You have any of these six cards. You even have the Mega Knight, and you don't have that much Elixir. And someone drops a Bandit at the river. 
What are you gonna do? Are you gonna drop a dark goblin to kill the bandit and take a negative like a bad trade? It's just that's awful. That's not it. Uh, you're gonna drop a defensive mortar and take a bad trade. That's not it. You don't have enough elixir for your mega knight, and you can't cycle to a knight or a goblin again because you don't have it in your hand. So, like your deck does not have good ground defenses because it is, you know, got fast flimsy dark goblin, anti air like in the air inferno dragon, and then in the air skeleton barrel. So not good spell like zap can't really defend ground stuff mortar is you know not really going to shoot the ground stuff so you you really do want to reevaluate your inferno dragon and have another cycle card whether it's bats or i don't know probably just like skeletons or or something else i, I think ice spirit kind of works with the deck because you are running mortar guards work well too um i just don't really like the inferno dragon in the deck at all probably little prince to be honest would be the best card because it literally does everything. It's incredibly versatile. But I also don't love, like, recommending Little Prince to every single person in every situation. But, yeah, Dark Goblin does kill that Little Prince. If you guys saw the positioning of that Dark Goblin, perfect. Assassinate Little Prince. Put in a lot of work. We can go for a Mortar here. Hopefully the Baby Dragon targets onto that. Wow, we were just outplaying this guy like crazy. Imagine getting outplayed this hard. Would not be me, my guy. This is actually insane. That Dark Goblin value, someone has to count it. Someone has to let me know. That thing just gave me a whole host of value. That was like two Dark Goblins worth of value. And that's how it should be, right? Like, you know, you play a card well, you get value out of it. You know your right placement. Instead of just degenerately spamming like an Archer Queen ability and collecting four worth of value for one Elixir, it's not fair, right? I don't like that. I also don't like the fact that there's like an Evo Bomber that you can drop it at the river. It locks onto something. It does 1,600 damage in two shots, right? Like, it's stupid. Like, the Dark Goblin earned us value there. I deserved that. And it wasn't like some cataclysmic situation where the guy was not able to recover from the game. It just made an impact on the game and it made it push closer to the point that we're winning. That's what I liked about Clash Royale the most when, that, when there weren't evolutions because... You can make outplays like that, and every card still felt balanced when you made outplays. But you just felt the balance of the, the game tipping in your favor, and it felt like a really satisfying experience. That's the, the biggest issue right now with evolutions. They don't require that much brain power to get massive advantages. Or you could just get a matchup advantage, and then they can't counter the card. Whereas Dark Goblin, it's not that oppressive if it's like, you know... If, if it's a card that counters you, it's not that oppressive. It's like, wow, I really can't break through this Dark Goblin. Sure, you can have that feeling sometimes, but it won't, like, win the game. All right, anyway, we're going to Mega Knight here since we have the Inferno Dragon. We'll go for Mortar as well. The good thing about your deck is the Inferno Dragon does pair decently with Mega Knight. So, like, the nice combination of the Inferno Dragon getting tanked for means that you'll win a lot of bridge battles. Like, it will melt Baby Dragon. It will melt any, like, you know, card that he's trying to counter the Mortar with. Unless he doesn't have... Unless he has Electro Dragon. They have Electro Dragon. You're just screwed. We're trying to do dual lane pressure. If I was better at the game, I would have been doing that a lot. But I did not play perfect. I'm never going to hide my actual, you know, capabilities or my skill. Like, if I mess up, I'll let you guys know. I want to highlight that all the time. Applying dual lane pressure is very nice with this deck. It's just a fundamental way of winning. Uh, Goblin's on the tower, and the Mega Knight's tanking, so he's just taking a fat L. I'm going to go in for an Inferno Dragon here. We should be able to finesse that. And also go for a Knight. We win the battle with the river because Inferno Dragon is very good at, against Baby Dragon. I also, like, this is an outlier situation where the opponent just gets destroyed by Inferno Dragon. Like, his deck doesn't deal with it. Um, but, yeah. Um, going opposite lane is quite nice. A respectable feat. Respectable maneuver. We're going to let Little Prince reset, and when it starts moving again, then we attack it. Because we don't want to let it, like, keep its attack speed. We waited for it to start moving, so then it reset its attack. So that's the best way of playing against it. Even if he logs, it doesn't matter. Or Bar Barrels, it doesn't matter. Skeleton Barrel on their side is great. He loses the, um, like, uh, all of his stuff to the Inferno Dragon again. A ton of damage. He loses the Little Prince, too, if we zap it. Actually, it just dies anyway. <gasps> Yo, he got outplayed so hard. Oh my gosh, he got so lucky. That is actually so lucky. The Guardian should not have come down. Yikes. Luck base over 1 million, my guy. Respect. Respect on your name. All right, we're just going to spam on both sides because that's how you win Clash Royale games. He just loses his Spear Goblins. Lost his Spear Goblins. Very cool. So, 
as you guys thought, like maybe some of you thought I would take the left hand tower. It's impractical to only spam in one side when your opponent has an immense amount of answers to your big cards. But if you apply opposite lane, they will gradually just ignore things thinking they can, and then they'll get into a spot that they have to defend both sides, and then they'll be like, oh, this game's over. So instead of spamming your units into a meat grinder, force them to allocate answers that they can't, and then they eventually lose by whittling their elixir down. Double lane pressure, even if you're not trying to take the other side in a lot of decks, is actually the way that you win. Very cool deck. I would highly, highly, highly recommend um, removing the Inferno Dragon in most situations and trying to... I mean, the Inferno Dragon is really good in that matchup, so you could keep it. So I guess the only thing that you really need to do, like the definite thing you need to do, is you need Eros. You really do. I don't see how this deck functions without it. What if I did something like this? How does that work? Maybe better, maybe worse. Or zap. I just... I can't play this without arrows, man. Against, like, higher level players. I think Snowball is probably better because it allows you the ability to, like, bounce back uh, balloons. And it also enables you the access accessibility to bounce back Hog Riders, Ram Riders. I just like Snowball more as a fundamental card. You still don't have that many bait cards. You did something like this. I might, I might mess with this man. I, I would just test it out and see. Like, Evo Knight is cool and all, but like... Having the ability to just bombard your opponent with a lot of spells is just so annoying. Something like that, even. I don't know. I, I, I'd mess with it a little bit. See what you can do. Um, there's definitely different versions, but I think you need to incorporate Eros. I, it would take me a while to give you a great deck, because I, I, I haven't tested enough Evil Wallbreakers. But yeah, I, I think arrows are just better. I might be wrong, but your deck, your deck is good. I mean, I give it like a, I'm so biased. For fun factor, for me, it's an eight. It's like an eight or an 8.5 for fun factor because I love mortar, especially decks that are unique and interesting with Dark Goblin. Like you picked my favorite cards and put them in the deck. My dude has card Riz. He's rizzing me up with his cards for real. Like straight up. So I, I think I got influenced very hard. So I'm not going to be able to rate it as the number one deck of the day, but... For the, the most fun, by far the most fun deck. By far the most fun deck. Thank you for it. All right. And that's that's what it should be, right? Like, you should play the cards that you enjoy, right? Like, if you're not playing the decks or cards that you enjoy, then you're not enjoying the game to the maximum potential. You're not going to be pro players at this game, most likely. So enjoy the game while you play it. That's how everyone should look at it. So shout out to you, my, goo, my guy. And uh, yeah, that's what's up. Um, can you do Wallbreaker Skeletons with Goblin Barrel, Bomb Tower, Fireball, Ice Spirit, Mini Pekka? I play decks like that. You can type in Surtag, Fastest Goblin Barrel Cycle Deck. There's so many of those. I, I don't want to do that again um, for a bit. It's fun, though. Um, I just don't want to run it here because I've made so many videos on it. Uh, Evo Mortar, Evo Valkyrie, Musketeer, Ice Lizard, Goblins, Fireball, Log. Tesla been trying to push 9k with solid defense. Just need some guidance. Yeah, you need to remove the Evo Valkyrie. Um, just doesn't work. It's pretty bad. You already have Fireball, so you have Splash Damage there. Just be more mindful with when you drop Fireball. Also, Ice Wizard is better when you have Tornado. So what I would do is I would, you know, swap out that Evil Valkyrie for an Evil Knight real quick. Maybe swap out the Ice Wizard um, or the Musketeer for a Little Prince if you have it. Um, if not, then use Tornado with Ice Wizard. And then you could have, like, Tornado Log. Ooh, test Tornado Mortar and Tesla. It, ah, it's just a lot. I don't like having Tesla with your mortar. I think having like Tornado instead of Tesla would be nice. And then you could run like a fast cycle card like or, like guards or you do have that. I put an Ice Spirit then. Ice Spirit for a faster cycle instead of your Musketeer or Ice Wizard. And then run Tornado instead of Tesla. And then your deck would be better. It would be way better. You just have to get better at using Tornado. If you're if you're running if you're running Evo Mortar without Tornado, some of my friends that are pros are like you're, you're playing a mid-deck, Jake. They tell me that. I'm like, oh, man, but I love it. They're like, for me, I realize that Evo Mortar isn't... Evo Mortar is really good when you have Tornado because you can Tornado their units near their tower and splash onto it. Or if you're Big Brain and you have Miner, you can Miner behind the tower, Tornado their units back towards the tower, and then their units follow your Miner behind the tower further, and then the Mortar splashes onto the tower and hits their units. And then the Goblins hit their tower, and it's so fun. And then obviously Tornado is going to give you good defenses when you have your Mortar out of cycle. 
and they spam with the win condition on their side, you still have the tornado to activate King Tower. So it's it's just reliable. You already have Ice Wizard in the deck. You already have that leveled up. Definitely use Tornado instead of Tesla in your deck. Bree S says, I love your videos and I watch them on my lunch breaks. You ha do have girl viewers. Thanks for getting me through my shifts. Lots of love to Bree, guys. Thank you for the $5. You didn't even send a deck or anything. Just sent love to us and I really appreciate you. And uh, yeah, hopefully your shifts uh, become easier and hopefully the year is going to be a beautiful one for you. Thank you for the vibes. And uh, also again, Victor, thank you for the $5 before that. All right, Rawl says, Evo Mortar, Evo Bombers. Oh, dude, I think everyone just started trying to riz me up with the Evo Mortar as soon as I said it. Evo Bomber, Evo Skelly. I'll, I'll play this. I'll play this. We'll, we'll do it. Because there, I, we already have the Evo Mortar in there, you know? It's 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 light. It's just definitely, it's definitely uh, kosher. It's definitely me not having Copium where I just want to play my favorite cards in Clash Royale. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. All right. It's definitely not me just wanting to play my cards I enjoy. Oh. But yeah, Dark Goblin is... Oh, man. I want to see a Dark Goblin evolution. I wonder if it's going to start having poisonous arrows. Oh, that's definitely what they're going to do, right? To follow the concept of the card, imagine a card that does poison over time to cards that, like, gives poison effect. I think that, that the Dark Goblin will do that. Man, that would be so fun. That'd actually be really cool. I hope they do that. Like, it does really effective damage to uh, tank decks or something because of the poison. Oh, man, I would love that. But then the tanks die, and then they become smaller versions, so then it doesn't really poison them for long. I don't know. Imagine Dark Goblin, Ice Wizard, Tornado. <laughs> It'd be so funny. All right, where's our flying machine at? I'm trying to find it. All right, there it is. So we got a lot of Fireball bait up in here, and that looks pretty good. I mean, uh, Evo Bombers or Evo Skellies. So I get to pick. You said Evo Bomber first, so I'm just going to default to that. You do have Magic Archer. Trash card, by the way. I love it. The Mr. Magic Man is simply outclassed by the Bomber. Crazy. How much money have you spent on the game? I'm playing so much and only have halfway to single level 15 deck, says Jeremy. Um, I've spent probably like over $1,000, but I've also, you know, made a lot of money on this game from... Uh, from Playing professionally, I won five thousand dollars in one tournament. So one thing to consider is like, you know, your what you're doing for content and everything, right? Like, I spend way more money on my content creation than I ever did in uh, Clash Royale. So that is the thing that I usually spend my money on. Um, oh wow, he went for arrows immediately. But yeah, I I only sp I, I spent I do this game for like a living, right? In game. I will do giveaways for you guys if you beat me and I'll give away pass rallies. There's actually a live stream that I do that. And if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and you want to be a part of that and you want to get pass rallies if you beat me, then all you have to do is subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. I do a stream every single month where if you beat me, you get pass rally. Um, Yeah, it's a fun fun thing that we do here. Um, just for subscribers, just for people that have been a part of the channel for a bit um, that get notified. No one else really knows about it in the community. I don't broadcast it on Twitter. Uh, I don't broadcast it anywhere. It's just here on YouTube. And that's where it will always be. Um, do it for you guys. Uh, but yeah, I I think that you don't have to spend money on this game if you want to have fun. Um, what I would recommend, like when I wasn't maxed out, what I did is I solely and legitimately only did this. I played Grand Challenges every single day because the cards are even level there. And you're not getting screwed by level disadvantages and you can play every card in the game. It's just, it is the way that you should play the game. It is the way that it is intended to play. Um, if you have non-max cards and you're grinding against people that are over leveled than you it's really hard again i do have a pinned comment uh after this video is going to be released that you can go down there and it shows an entire playthrough like i played through ladder and beat people with my under leveled cards smacking them down and destroying them so you guys can check that out if you haven't already i would really recommend it um but also at the same time it, don't feel bad if you're losing because like Maybe you guys haven't played as much Clash Royale as me, and that's understandable. Maybe you guys haven't spent the hundreds of hours, thousands of hours, or whatever that I have mastering this game and playing it as many hours as needed to to learn every single interaction and every card. Um, so, you know, that's uh, it's harder to do those mechanical plays and get the value that you need to win those games. But it's possible, um, and if you guys want to, you can check out the pinned comment to learn. Um, breaks down like what I do. But, yeah, Grand Challenges are where it's at. Just keep doing that and enjoy the game while you're doing it. Don't uh, 
If you're not enjoying the process, then that's a problem. The process of getting better is something that should be enjoyed in almost everything. Otherwise, like, for instance, if you're working out and you're not enjoying it, it's really going to be unsustainable for you. If you are... Oh, no, we're going to lose. Or nor. I can't stop the bandit. Yeah, I actually lose this game. There's, there's not really that good of a chance of us winning that. Um, Magic Archer sucks. Really wouldn't play it uh, right now. Really, 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 really recommend playing something else. Um, yeah, if I had the like, guards in the deck, I wouldn't have lost. To be honest. Let's just uh, run it back without this trash card in the deck and show you why it's better this way. Or bats, honestly. I mean... Yeah, let's just let's just show you why it's better this way. I mean, anything really. Ice Spirit even, or a faster cycle, or a snowball because we don't have a small spell. Yeah, it's just the, the magic archer sucks, man. Could run Zapper Rage even. Probably tornado, to be honest. Mess around the deck a little bit. You got Evo Bomber and you got Mortar, so might as well. If you're not running Evo Bomber and you're running skeletons, I wouldn't be running Tornado. I'd just run like Snowball or something. Or, or arrows. Arrows are really strong. Arrows are great. Arrows are really, 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 really good card. Arrows fireball kills Electro Dragon. So if people are stacking up Electro Dragons behind a Golem Battle Healer, or whatever, you're you're totally chilling then. Let me keep in mind for anyone that's wondering. Um, uh, but yeah, Raw, thank you for the ten dollar dono, man. Uh, Magic Archer just is obsolete at this point, so that's the uh, main thing that I would recommend changing. Um, also Sleepy Eyes, thank you for the ten dollars. He says Evo Mortar, Mighty Miner. Um, guards, you can sub it for minions. Skeleton Dragon, Zappy's mini pack of bowler. Yeah, I would probably sub it for minions because of your deck having, um, you know, already having mini pack and bowler, right? It's, it's, it's okay though. And Mighty Miner, you have a lot of like really defensive ground cards. All right. I think we screwed up his tornado or his King Tower activation. He's probably still going to take the tower damage. Yep. Beautiful. We don't care if he activates King Tower. We just care as long as, you know, he takes the, the brunt force of the damage on his tower. This deck is so much better than what it what uh, your version was based off of just one card change. Like the core identity of your deck is phenomenal. Like it's good. I like it. Like I can't complain about it at all, my guy. But I can uh, just be honest with you about like you know that one card difference being such an impactful thing. Um, watch this as well. This is. I'm gonna be genuine about this as well. Um, in this specific matchup. Yeah, Tornado Slaps. Magic Archer wouldn't have been able to do that. But there's so many other matchups, right? Hog Rider. Ram Rider. Like, Wall Breakers. Balloon. Miner. Tornado's just a really strong card. <laughs> uh, especially with the Evil Mortar. So I want to show the Evil Mortar with the uh, with the NATO, hopefully, as the game escalates. Against Goblin Giant, you can actually activate King Tower. You can activate King Tower against Goblin Giants with a Tornado. If you guys are unaware, that is an interaction that works. Goblin Giant can get pulled, but the regular Giant can't. Someone's got to explain that to me. I understand why, like, the gravity of the card. Just, like, I don't know. It's just, like, the weight of it is different in Clash Royale, but I don't know why. But, like, Goblin Giant with the two Spear Goblins should be significantly heavier than a regular Giant. Especially since it costs more, too. Kind of a weird thing. Alright, that hits his tower, so just gonna chill. Lumberjack dies. A giant skeleton here, expect him to go recruits and then just armor him and he loses, right? Just loses. It's over. <laughs> it's Ogre, my guy. Go bomber. Should lock onto the recruits instead of anything else. That's going to be, yep. Two, two uh, jumps, so that's uh, around 700 damage. Pretty insane if you're asking me. Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. We're going to fireball on all this because I don't want to lose. I could have also not done that, but I just felt like I didn't want to lose the game. So <laughs> I decided I'm going to cycle back to another fireball. Imagine. Imagine all the people. All right, wait, wait, wait. No, Ornor. Ornor, my dude. We're evolving to become Australian. All right, GG. So yeah, your deck is pretty good. Um, if we just sub out the one bad card in your deck and really abuse the overpowered nature of your cards. The thing is, the biggest issue that I see in your guys' decks when you show them to me, there is usually a double up. Whether it's like a Royal Ghost and a Valkyrie doing the same thing, or a Magic Archer and an Evolve Bomber doing the same thing, or running Firecracker with Evolve Bomber doing the exact same thing. When you have one card filling that capacity in the deck, don't overdo it. Keep it simple, stupid is the name of the game. That's what my friend tells me in real life when I overthink things. Um, you want to make sure that you have 
synergy, well-rounded deck where you're abusing the broken feature as much as you can while supporting it with other cards so it's not as predictable. If you have one feature that you over-level, like you're going to the gym and you're only hitting like biceps and your legs and your back and your triceps are just bad, you know, it's not a good look. It's also not a good look in Clash Royale to have like three different cards doing the same thing. It's uh, You don't want to be that guy at the gym that does the same exercise all day. Uh, hopefully that helps. All right, we'll do a couple free-to-play ones and then we'll end the stream. So I'm going to do three more decks. Spam it in the chat and we will be checking out what you guys got. Three more decks from you guys. No pay to win anymore. No more uh, donations for the rest of the stream. Thank you guys so much for those. Really appreciate it. I'll read the donations, but I won't be playing any decks from donations anymore. Wow, am I the only streamer that does that? Probably. <laughs> Most people just do so don't know uh, uh, things like that, but I try not to. All right, so we have Rai Jones, Evo Wallbreaker, Evo Bomber, Knight, Firecracker, Bomb Tower, Goblin Gang, Arrow's Minion. Working on Little Prince to Max to replace Firecracker. I like that. You should not have Evil Bomber though. And Firecracker, I'm not going to play it though because you have Evil Bomber and Evil Firecracker. I just said that I didn't like that. So I don't want to be playing the same thing over and over again. Uh, all right. One of those decks doesn't have a win condition. Is there a win condition here? Um, where is a win condition? Where is a win condition? We are looking. All right. So Evo Knight, Tesla Log, Dark Goblin, Goblin Barrel, Skeletons, Rocket, Ice Spirit. That's a different type of log bait deck that we don't see very often. So I'll play it. I like seeing Dark Goblin instead of Princess. I like seeing some different type of innovation. Dark Goblin's a fun card to play. Let's run it. Go. No. Connor uh, Soy. I, I don't, I, I'm sorry if I don't say your last name correctly, man. But thank you for the, uh, for the deck. Also, if I say your guys' name incorrectly, let me know. Um, I'd love to know how to pronounce it. All right. So we got Evo Knight in there. That was the card that you want me to play. And then Skeletons Rocket. So we're running Evo Skeletons, I guess, too. Um, Dark Goblin. Ooh, where's our Dark Goblin at? Dark Goblin, Goblin Barrel, Goblin Gang. And then Rocket. Is Goblin Gang in there? I guess I'm going to have to take another Gander. Ice Spirit. No, no, no. It wasn't. You you, uh, you had me bamboozled, my dude. All right, there we go. That's the deck. Let's play it. Let's go. Let's run it. The clasher. <laughs> the most uh, unique Clash Royale experience is playing against a Clasher. All right, we're going to go Knight here as well, and we'll see what happens. All right, we'll go Ice Spirit. The dude is playing Graveyard for sure, which is not a good matchup for us, but I think we can... Well, it's not terrible because we had Dark Goblin. Not a matchup I enjoy. I'm not an enjoyer of this. Am I Baby Dragon NATO or something? What we Tesla? Ooh, that was... Tough. I mean, it's four for four, right? Cope, cope for sure, but it's fine. Ice Spirit full counters Ice Wizard, right? Or no? Skeletons plus Ice Spirit does. I think Ice Spirit does as well. Ice on Ice on Ice. It's nice. Alright. We're going to try to cycle a lot of Skeletons, I think. So, just cycling that in the middle is ideal. I think it'll probably poison. Like, when our Skeletons before we cycle Dark Goblin, and then we're going to go Knight. He's going to poison left. So we're gonna try to outpace his Barbrill. He'll only have Tornado in cycle, I think. Do we play better? I believe so. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't he's just gonna baby dragon it, and then he takes a lot, right? He Nados. <gasps> Yo, let's go! That's it. That's what we like to see. That knight is lighting up his life. That's sick. All right. You guys, ready to see the most broken thing ever? Stupid skeletons. Tricks are for kids. So strong. I don't want to drop Ice Spirit, but I have to. I don't want to eat the Baby Dragon damage. He also used Bar Barrel, so we're going to go Goblin Barrel again. Dark Goblin's going to lock Tower if he doesn't... Ooh, he messed up real bad. As we're off my guy. Tesla's probably better here, but I wanted to cycle the Knight. 
Missed the skeletons. He probably isn't going to NATO this. Yeah, as I said before, like, because we've played so much Clash, like, I, I know, like, the ins and outs of, ma uh, like, maximizing our utility. Tesla is so good. Is so good against Graveyard Skeletons when there's no tank. I don't think he gets damage. Oh, he does get some. That's actually a lot more than I thought. Right, let's keep it up. Ah, that Ice Spirit was bad. It should have been dropped and predicted. I know. Alright, so those goblins just lock on the tower since we went for an ambitious graveyard and we punished him. So one of the things that better players will do when they recognize that they're at a little bit higher level level than you, they'll just constantly spam wink additions when they're up. And they'll like never give you any breathing room. So if you play against people that are a little bit higher ranked, they'll just like dismantle you really really effectively like right now he's gonna go graveyard but i'm gonna go goblin bro at the same time i'm gonna defend minimalistically with skeletons and if he overcommits with a nato then he has nothing for the goblin bro and then he just loses right that's i'm glad i was able to show it immediately like i was able to show you guys what i was talking about but when i play against people that are better than me right like let's say i play against uh egw if you guys know who he is he is literally one of the best players in the world always at the top of leaderboard whenever i play against him i'll win sometimes but 90% of the matches where I play against someone that's like a top five player in the world and I match into him, um, you know what happens is he screws around and he screws me over. He'll spam Magonite, he'll go Bandit, and then I'll do like one play that's suboptimal on defense. He'll recognize it and it'll be like, ha ha, you lose, you suck, Jake. And and that's that's what he says. Or he doesn't say that. He's a really nice guy. Uh, he's British. <laughs> uh, but yeah. He, um, he, he's such a refined sir with his accent and everything, and he just, he destroys me. Um, so, like, that's one thing that I'll typically do when I'm playing, at, when I haven't pushed up. Like, right now, I'm not pushed up. I'm still using your guys' decks. I'm still not at my, like, normal rank. Um, I'll punish the opponent when I know that they're overcommitting. Like, he went in for a graveyard. I'm like, okay, so now you have to choose between poisoning a dark goblin for negative trade or defending your tower. Which one will you choose? And then he just loses. Um, that's one of the other cool aspects that, that happens a lot um, when you get better. All right. The, at least when there's a, a skill difference. That's like one of the biggest things that you can tell. Uh, it happens so often to me whenever I play against good players or really good players. Or the best players in the world, rather. <laughs> no, I think it's an understatement to say really good players. because. Um, all right. So Golem, Graveyard, Skeleton King, Night Witch, Arrows, Evo Bats, and Evo Skeletons. Yo, Genvaldo, that is sick, man. That looks fun. So your deck right here, it's probably like a solid, I don't know, 7.5 because Goblin Barrel is a weak win condition, but it's got a really strong synergy. It's not that innovative, but it does have Dark Goblin. So, you know, you're, you're rizzing me up with the cards. I like it. I mean, Dark Goblin's a fun card. All right, so yeah, we're gonna run the Golem Graveyard deck because that's also unique and interesting and fun as well. We, we're really on a roll with uh, good decks today. You guys have come up with some unique, interesting, and fun ones. We'll go back through the uh, through the chronological order of what we had at the very end and see what we like and what we don't like. Or what ones were our favorite. All right. So we're doing that. Bats. And after this, we'll pick one more. One last one. This will be... Uh, we're doing two more, guys. This is... Ah, uh... oh, Zap is awful with Golem, guy. It's not it. You really, 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 really do not want zap because if you miss, sorry, if you hit the zap on the tower, you know what happens, right? It resets the tower away from targeting your golem, which is tanking for the graveyard, onto your graveyard skeletons. Your tower, their tower will start hitting you and it'll hurt a lot. Not good. It works with golem. It doesn't work with graveyard, so, so your synergy is bad. You got to have snowball. Immediately, like the only change I would make in this deck is snowball for, uh, snowball for zap and then your deck is better. Like, a lot better. Unless you purposely miss the zap on the tower. Which, I mean, I guess you could do. Because zap damage is inconsequential. That's probably what you do, honestly. Maybe that works. Yeah, it probably works-ish. There's a reason giant graveyard players never play with zap. They always play with snowball. Alright. One more, one more game after this one. Let's go, guys. Get fired up. Let's end on a bang. And go skellies here. And he's going to Skeleton Barrel me. That's fine. We can Skeleton King on top of the Skeleton Barrel. And then we can go in for a Golem in the back as well. This is looking really, really good for us. I'm an enjoyer of this experience. 
I don't like that we don't have arrows. I'm not going to go golem right now. I think it would be a bit too ambitious. We're going to arrows on this, and we'll click the Skeleton King ability. This is going to be obnoxious for him. Like, he's going to look at this and be like, I hate this game. <laughs> just a little bit. He's going to drop a Skeleton Barrel into that and just have it shredded while he takes damage from the bats. Like, this is awful for him. Pretty traumatic experience if you're this guy. We can go skeletons on top of this. Doesn't have skeleton barrel, so he can't apply any pressure. I don't have to zap. I can actually golem after going for skeletons. So think about it from this perspective. The way that you play this deck is you try to find situations where you can go for a golem and then defend cheaply with evolved skeletons or evolved bats and get a bailout. Because evolved skeletons will defend anything in the game for one elixir. It's that dumb. Oh, I didn't activate King Tower. I'm bad. The decision making was phenomenal. The execution was awful. All right. Hopefully we can execute a little bit better here. Zap was unnecessary. Pretty big blunder. Skeleton Barrel pops, but does it die? I think it does. Mostly. Should get a couple shots on our tower. It's going to be around 300 damage. Not that big of a deal. Alright, so strategy for us. Probably dueling pressure with Skeleton King and Golem. PDH. Alright, we're going to arrows on that. Never mind. Very cool. A log. He'll probably go for a skeleton uh, barrel soon. We'll go for a skeleton king, and then we can go and do some other stuff. How's your dacer tag, dude? It was going so well. It's really going really well. I'm gonna try to catch up with one of my friends, uh, and then I'm gonna catch up with another one. I'm gonna go have sushi with him in a, in, a, in a little bit. And honestly, this is one of my favorite streams that we've had in a while. I love doing this stream. It's nice to see so much positivity and. It's cool. It's cool to see this community just come out and just be like, Hey, Jake, I want to see your, your improvements to our decks. I want to get better at the game. Or, like, you know, you guys getting hyped up about this stuff is cool. It's, it's nice to see this type of energy. All right, we're going to go for Night Witch in the back. And we're probably dead here. I, I don't love the fact he's got evil Firecracker, but you know what happens. I'm going to poison away. We got to go Graveyard. We got we to gotta start going in. Also, the Ice Golem is seriously so obnoxious. I played this very well. I do think your deck is great. I don't think I played well, and I also don't think that it was good to play into a uh, Firecracker Poison type deck with Ice Golem. The Ice Golem is the main card that screwed us. It's Insidious. You look at the Ice Golem and you're like, ah, that's not going to do anything. But it freaking pops and all of my stuff, and it kills all of my bait cards. Like, Ice Golem is underrated against this, as Cashman would scream. Anyway, GG and well played our opponent. He played it super well. Great player. Um, I don't think I can win that matchup. <laughs> that, one's a, that one's a tough one. When you're playing uh, Golem or Beatdown decks with Giant, the, the massive meme about it is sometimes your decks just get countered by your opponent and you can't do anything because your cards are not very defensive. You're all oriented on offense. And if your offense doesn't break through, there's nothing you can do because you're fully specced into offense in your deck and you have no defense. So if they're able to defend your stuff and your defense is zero, you're kind of screwed <laughs> because you're not going to be able to defend their stuff. Right? You feel me? This deck is not defensive. If our opponent can defend, I lose. Kind of what happened. Uh, still going, taking, still taking decks? Yeah, this is the last one, guys. Spam the chat. <laughs> uh, the editing, the skilled energy, and the integrity. You um, make principled, uplifting content. I wish more people followed suit. So this is Banjo time. I'm just honored that you think that, man. Thank you. That was a uh, pretty high praise. Not going to lie. You've been recognized IRL? Yep. Uh, I do get recognized IRL. I used to not go outside very often, <laughs> so that never happened. I used to stay tucked in my uh, in my room. Now I go outside quite a bit, and I get recognized. It's fun. Uh, if you guys ever see me, definitely come up to me, no matter if I'm with a girl, with a friend, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, family, I'd love to see you guys. It'd be cool. You'd never be interrupting me. Um. So Evo Knight, Poison. I know a lot of other content creators are not like that. Uh, they don't like it, but for me, like, I, not too many people know me. I'm like a J tier celebrity, <laughs> like F tier. Um, so it's like, it happens like, I don't know, once a week if I go out a lot, uh, which is kind of cool. Doesn't happen that often though. Um, all right. So let's take a look. Uh, Night Bomber, Poison, Graveyard, Hog Rider, Little Prince, Royal Delivery. All right, so I don't want to play that because we play that a lot. Mega Knight, Hog Rider, E-Barbs. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Gaming with Nashawn. I got you, my guy. I got you, my guy. 
Hog Rider with Mega Knight. It's pretty fun. It's a, it's a cool card combination. Oh, let's end out with a bang, bros. Let's, uh, let's, let's jump on the tower. Let's win it. Uh, wait, can I find the deck? I might have missed it. All right, Tesla, Dark Goblin. Ooh, we, we don't like the Tesla here. But yeah, the last deck, if I had Snowball, I don't think it would have made much of a difference. I think I still would have lost, but it, it's a nice implement to the deck. Switch Zap for Snowball. All right, we want Tesla somehow in this Mega Knight deck. Oh, you are cooking up something crazy, my guy. E-Barbs, too. Oh, my gosh. Dude, can we just run Evolve Barbs instead? <laughs> Asking for a friend. <laughs> uh, but the Elite Barbarians are elite. Do you like how they say Elite Barbarians and then they have the Elite title? They're the Elite Elite Barbarians when they reach level 15. You get it? The, the title and then the little title underneath. That's kind of funny. Anyway, um, kind of stupid, but it's fun. All right, so we want a few more cards. We are looking, we are looking. Tesla Evo Firecracker. And this is the last deck of the day, my dudes. Unless I lose, and then I'll do another. <laughs> if I lose with this deck, we will run a, We will run another game. All right, where's the Tesla? Or Dark Goblin. Where's Daryl the Dark Goblin? Did he go in the deck? No, he didn't. Daryl is lost in sea, my dudes. All right, here he is. And we are missing Zap Log. Okay, so you have two spells. So you're like, I can't decide which one I want. I put them both, which is not ideal. You have a lot of ways of removing things with the Hog Rider and the Firecracker. I mean, I like the fact that you don't have Firecracker and Bomber in the same deck. Appreciate that. I mean, if you have a Fast Cycle deck, it's, it's tenable. It's viable. But a lot of people don't. All right. Um... Dude, imagine, like, buildings get <laughs> evolutions. It's going to be so bad for the game when that happens. I'm not excited. Uh, like, Inferno Tower just massively melting everything. Tesla, like, I don't know, going underground and still shooting things underground and hiding. <laughs> Something dumb like that is going to happen. All right, we're going to hog here immediately. And we'll see if we can get some damage. Into an Inferno Dragon. Let's go! Blessed with the best starting hand possible. Yo, why am I fired up three hours and 21 minutes into a stream? Oh, wow. I guess I'm getting fired by the Lava Hound. Makes sense. Makes sense. Wait. Strategies? No, not strategies. Or maybe? No, not strategies. Ah, if the Tesla stayed alive a little bit longer, we'd be okay. But then Fire Dragon's literally just going to lock on my tower loose. No, it was so good until it wasn't. <laughs> Okay, okay. We're still cooking. We're still cooking. Just let it be known, we are still in the kitchen. Oh, his name is literally Lava. How did I not see that? Am I blind? Jeez. All right, we get Mega Knight at the river. We have Zap, so there's chances here. Run away. Yes! The great escape! The great escape! I, I don't know. I just did it. I, I just went for it. My, my, my ambition is calling. And it says, knock on that tower. Oh, all right, all right, all right. And Fur Dragon's dead. It doesn't do anything. We have two towers, and it has to take a long journey there. He might be able to get back to Barb's. Who knows? Oh, Rider. <laughs> okay, he's going to Barb's this. Evo Barb's in two seconds. What? Excuse? I have no elixir. <laughs> this is sketchy. Wait, it's kind of working. I had no faith in that defense. I had less faith in that defense than the Clash Royale team to balance Evolve Skeleton. <laughs> okay, uh, that's enough. That's enough shenaniganery. Oh, that actually hurt a lot. All right, we're going to go for a firecracker here, and then we'll see what else we're going to do. Oh my goodness, stop it. No one loves someone that does that. I mean, maybe someone does, but I don't love you. Stop it. <gasps> ah! Ah, the card's so annoying. I'm dead. I don't even know what I'm supposed to do here. I don't think that was good at all. I guess we're playing another game, guys. <laughs> <laughs> We're running the bat. What am I doing? I just misclicked the firecracker in the middle. The firecracker didn't want to live. 
She saw too many bad things in her life. She's just done. She's like, I'm out. <laughs> Peace. Peace out, Girl Scout, she said. She got burned at the stake. Uh, she really, I mean, dying to an Inferno Dragon must be one of the worst experiences in the game. Really, like you're getting like heated up. That's not good. I don't know. I'd rather just get rocketed, man. I'd rather just get rocketed and never, never have to feel it. Everything's gone. The firecracker's just like gradually getting more pain. Uh, anyway. We'll, we'll try another deck. Obviously, uh, having Tesla in the same deck as this is pretty bad. You want to be running a more offense-oriented deck. If I were to change things, I try to show you guys like what I would do. Probably something like this. And then it's okay. It's still not great, but it works. This works-ish. They'll have Fireball Bait. You have, you know, anti air bait uh, and you have a fast cycle still that's fine it's acceptable it's permissible i'd allow it all right uh rob thank you for the uh sub as well dude fried in their own armor as a caster of king's cup uh to put it oh yeah being fried in your own armor is brutal for real all right wizard pekka balloon tornado no i'm not doing that <laughs> I don't have a death wish today. Um, Wizard is not a card that I'm going to be playing as often. It's very bad. Um, I want to win this last game. So we're going to find something that's actually decent-ish. Okay, this isn't great, but it's something that I could probably improve on. And it looks it looks unique enough. We haven't seen much ex Executioner. We saw it once today. I think it did win or maybe it lost. I'm not sure, but it's, it's a great card. Executioner... It essentially is a magic archer as well that locks onto towers. It's just outshined by Evo Bomber. So it's kind of the reason why it's not played. And Bowler is better than it. So when you have two cards that fulfill the same utility as it, and it overshadows it, like the Bowler has knockback, the Evo Bomber gets more damage and it's cheaper, then you don't really need the Executioner. But the Executioner still has like some marginal utility that it doesn't, that the other two don't. It has anti air. You just get your anti-air in other aspects instead of using uh, the Executioner usually. But I'm still going to play your deck. Evo Recruits, Evo Ice Spear. Oh my gosh. Oh my, man. my man's like, we have, an, we have another <laughs> evolution slot, but we don't need to use it. <laughs> Evo Ice Spear, it's so unfortunate. Um, it's a really bad card. Evo Skellies are better. So definitely swap that out for Evo Skeletons immediately or Evo Bats if you want anti-air. Like, it's just a waste. All right, Royal Hogs, Royal Delivery. Wow, you like the royalty, my dude. You're you're a king, you're a king or a queen, depending on who you are. Executioner, Poison, and then we got the deck. His name is Daddy DVX. The Daddy DVX. Here's your deck. Let's roll. Our strategy is going to be splitting pigs and Royal Hogs as much as possible. We're really not going to try to use our delivery. I think having Goblin Cage in this deck instead of Delivery would be impactful and better. And then having Evo Bats like this would already be better. But I'm going to run your deck as it's played. Uh, let's go. Also, having arrows in this meta is very good. Um, otherwise, you, I think you have to like Executioner NATO to kill like Dark Goblins and Firecrackers and Evo Bombers. And then an Evo Bomber might be able to get out range uh, on your Executioner and just kill everything. It's really annoying. But yeah, people are running Bomber in the meta, so you kind of sort of maybe really need to have uh, arrows so you can assassinate it. I mean, you can delivery on it, but it's just like not that good. Uh, I want to poison. I mean, delivery does work. It's it's not terrible. It's just not good on offense is in, in this type of deck. Oh my gosh. We have met a challenger. Mr. Optimus. This is a prime candidate to counter us. <laughs> Come on, man. I can't even make this up. My man literally is out here with Bomber and also Evo Bomber and also the Bomb Tower. Evo Bomber, Evo Bomber, Evo Bomber. Wear it out, wear it out, wear it out. <gasps> Please. No, I thought I dropped it fast enough. Uh, uh, die. No one loves you. No one loves you. No one loves you. All right, cool. When you scream no one loves you at the Bomber long enough, it will eventually die. That's the strategy, guys. If you learned it here first, um, that's what we're going to be doing. Please let me win. Please let me beat you, sir. I need this for my sanity. For my sanity. All right, didn't slaughter the uh, little prince boy, but it's okay. Uh, that's gonna get hit. Okay, I'm not crying, you're crying. 
Why would you do that? That was actually stupid. <laughs> that was sincerely awful. So thank you for doing that. All right. Um, he's going to guards. I think he's fine. I mean, he's going to have cannoneer. No king tower activation, though. There's that. Oh, he bomb towers, too? All right. This guy is kind of selling. And I like him. I like him being a merchant. I like him selling this game. All right. We're going to execution her in the back. I believe that we can just go in for whale hogs because he doesn't have the right card cycle and we'll poison on the evil bomber, but I don't like that. Or the regular bomber. Kill it, just kill it, just kill it. No one loves it, no one loves it. Leave, leave the game bomber. Beautiful. We could also NATO, he knows that. He doesn't want to mess with me. Bats, predictable bats, but the best bats we could do. Are you joking? I should have delivered on top of that. Oh, man. I messed up. I threw this game. I'm sorry. I didn't expect the evil wall breakers to hurt that much. Should have. Should have, could have, would have. Might be. We'll play one more with this deck. Um, or actually, eh, no, let's keep switching decks. Because I think that's the most fair way of doing it. I shouldn't give anyone special treatment. I do think that I lost this game, though. I will own up to it. This is not the deck's fault. Whenever it's not the deck's fault, I also want to admit... Like, I would have won this game if I played as intended. I do think the matchup was tough, but I think it was very winnable. There's a difference between being unwinnable, impossible counter, and a matchup that you could have won if you played better than your opponent. I do think I could have played better than him and not let the wall breakers connect. They're very strong, but having a goblin cage in the deck, as I said before, you know, kind of helps. It allows you to have a little bit of mistakes and still be fine. You're not going to lose the game then. Should have prioritized defending against the evolution instead of the goblin drill that wasn't going to kill me. I could have I Evo Ice Spirit on the Goblins as well. That would have been perfect. Should have played that a lot better. But it is what it is. All right, let's run a different deck. Evo Ice Spirit is so troll, though. <laughs> I stand by that. Evo Ice Spirit sucks. It's uh, a little bit better than Evo Valk, but still bad. Cool. Wait, this looks really fun. Uh, Lynn's Melvin, my graveyard deck. This might be a contender for one of the best decks of the day. I'm not even a fib. This is pretty good. Bats and Knight. And this is going to be the last game. Win or loss. We got it. We do want to make sure that it's a little bit unpredictable when we do end the stream. So, um, yeah. This is going to be the last game. Win or lose. It's it. We got this. Believe in me, bros. And everyone else. <laughs> Come on. We need it. For my sanity. I am not allowed to lose three games in a row. Especially with the great decks. Like, these guys. This deck's pretty good. Poison Little Prince. And we are missing one other card, which we will find out. So we are missing Skeleton Dragons, Knight, Bats, Goblins. We've been mobbing with the Goblins. Oh, Guards are better for sure. But I mean, Fast Cycle, we can't really complain that much. Run it. Wow, we're 8 oh, 1888. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Let's run it. So strategy with this deck is generally try to get to double elixir and you'll get a bigger and better benefit. That is the way that you like to play uh, if you are good at the game with uh, Graveyard. Your decks are, or the, the gameplay just gets so much easier when you hit double elixir. Bats are dead, so we're going to go Graveyard in single actually because he doesn't have bats in cycle. And if you don't have bats, he's probably prone to taking a lot more damage. Just judging by his deck, I, I felt like that was an okay play to do. I do want to activate King Tower. I'm going to wait for the Lumberjack and the Firecracker to give me the King's Activation. Then I'm going to do that. Light work. We're just going to, you know, play our absolute best Clash Royale. This is my CRL match, guys. For real. Bomb Tower finesses that. The Bats were kind of smart. Like, he ended up forcing out Skeleton Dragons. But not that big of a deal. I don't even think he hits death damage on our tower because we just dropped Skeleton Dragons. So, maybe it was actually a, a, a fool play for him. When it, we thought our plan was foolproof, uh, it, he ended up forcing out extra elixir, but it actually worked out in our favor. Always want to go and cycle knight instead of goblins. Even though these cost like a difference of one elixir, the knight will apply more pressure. It's not prone to dying to barrel. And also we get to the evolution. So it's just intrinsically better in every aspect. Go bats here and we can little prince. Depending on what he, oh, he thought I was going to graveyard. I'm not bad at the game. So I, well, at least I think I'm not terrible at the game. So I try not to do plays that are foolish. Okay. We could poison on bats. We needed to. A bit ambitious. It's very ambitious, but I believe it's okay. 
I think it's smart. We should be able to afford a counter because he dropped Evo Knight, so I felt like going for the poison was okay. If he goes in for anything, we can go for a bomb tower, and then we can go Evo Bats on his uh, balloon. Um, so yeah, this is the strategy for us. is It's weird, but you can just use bomb tower on defense against the balloon and full counter. King tower. Really nice. We'll roll a uh, Evolved Knight in the back. Little Prince on the right side, because that's where he's going in for the, the balloon. Me, you know split Skeleton Dragons for the extra defensive value. Set up our Bomb Tower a bit earlier. He might try to outcycle me. Poison. Means I've limited my potential of going in for offense, but it's fine. I just want to kill the Firecracker. Do this. Go Evo Bats. He's going to go Bats on this, and now he loses his Bats. Now he loses the game. Because now, the Lumberjack... Oh, he's got arrows! Makes sense. He didn't lose the game. He really should have lost the game. But since he had arrows, he got bailed out. That was such a big bailout for him. That was very, very lucky. So, what would have happened is the Evo Bats would have gotten to the point they would not have died. Because he wouldn't have been able to kill them since they, uh, you know, start sucking up HP for free. Poison is a bit ambitious, but I think it's okay. We want to hit the Firecracker with the Bomb Tower, and I think we will. Good. We're going to try to just get Skeleton Dragons down here and not cycle anything else. I think this is fine. It only gets one hit. Bats get Snowballed, so it would just be incredibly stupid for me to do that. As I said before, I'm really trying right now. Usually, I don't try super hard on live streams, and I'm a little bit more lethargic as the games go on later. But we're dialed in on offense and defense here. And we're dialing up the damage. All we have to do is just get back to a poison and we win. He's probably gonna lumberjack randomly at the river. Or maybe he gave up. I don't know. Yeah, it looks like he gave up. He knew. He knew it was over. Because if he lumberjacked, I would have just stopped it with a knight. And then the knight would have been isolating the lumberjack away from the balloon. So he wouldn't have been able to rage up the balloon. And then the bomb tower would have made sure that the balloon was in the middle. So all three towers would focus the balloon down. And he'd just lose, you know. Uh, my guy, Nova Sk or Nico Skrillex, would have been insane. Call 911 now. Because that balloon, uh, it would it would need some help. And we definitely need some help. <laughs> anyway, guys, it was a really fun stream. Thank you to everyone that showed up. Like this if you enjoyed, because I want to do these streams more often. When it reaches a view count or a like count in the future that's sustainable, then I'll be doing another stream. Um, I want to do this more than more, once a month. Right now, it's at once a month threshold. But if you guys like this video and you do this more often, um, I'll just add extra streams in addition to the regular videos, in addition to the extra stuff. I'll just do this more often for you guys. Um, try to give you more feedback. And it's cool that I was able to do it for three hours and uh, do it once a month. But hopefully we can do it even more frequently. Like if you enjoyed. Subscribe because I put out daily videos at 3 p.m. Eastern every single day. Or I do a live stream like today. And uh, also when the challenges come out. If you guys are not able to do evolutions and you don't have all the evolutions unlocked. Or you're not able to get the cards that you want. They subscribe to me because as soon as these challenges come out. I come out with the best deck on how to beat it, and I show you how to go through it without much trouble. As soon as the challenge came out, I built the best deck that everyone was able to use. A lot of my friends in real life even completed it without any problems. So they're like, yo, this deck is so easy to play, just three crowning everyone. And uh, yeah, that's because I take the time to study the challenge and come up with the best decks. So definitely subscribe for that if you guys want to unlock evolutions, because then you can go to the seasonal shop and just go and purchase them like that. Love you guys. Um, check out the pinned comment if you're a free-to-play player and you want to see my progression through ladder. There's a stream that I did recently where I progressed through ladder as a free-to-play player and I popped off and there's an entire series built on that. So check out the pinned comment if you haven't already and if you're interested in free-to-play ladder pushing with log bait. Because I break down how that deck works and why it's so successful. Anyway, I love you guys. No matter when you're watching, no matter where you're watching, have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace, love.